Hello, welcome. It's hard lore time. How are you, Harm's Way? Oh, what's up? Bo, the, 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 turn, the tables are turning today. <laughs> they really are. I got so many the, people in my apartment. Tell me, introduce the band. Let's, who do we got with us today? We got Nick G over here on the right. We got my main man, Chris Mills, as I punch his mic. <laughs> the up? drum, the drum machine to my left. And on the even on the far left, you might say, James Hammers Pliggy. Two time guests, James. Yeah, or repeat guests. We're having <laughs> dude, we're doing a gold jacket club, by the way, James. Returning member here. Yeah. So uh, once and you get to five, we'll get you we'll get you a beautiful gold jacket, all right? <laughs> and in spirit, of course, is Casey who physically could not fit here, nor do I have more than four channels on this mixer. But Correct. he very graciously volunteered not to, uh, not to attend. He's actually literally working right now on stuff we need for the tour. He's a fucking mm. trooper. And we will trooper. talk about him. We will talk about him fondly. Big time. Well, we've Shout also out got Bo with us who, hey. you know, normally he's the host of this program, but today he's just a guy I get to ask questions to. Mm. It's another band so, guy. To some extent, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hard Lord's got harm's way today for a very special occasion. Um, um the monumental follow-up to 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 the smash hit post human <laughs> is finally here. It's finally out. <laughs> Common suffering, guys. <laughs> mm. We we all suffer. We suffered trying to put this episode together. It's <laughs> very true. It's true. And that's that's what this record's all about. <laughs> um when did when did writing for Common Suffering start? Nick, you want to take that one? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it was late 2019. Um, yeah, late before, 2019. Yeah, before the pandemic and everything, we we'd already started like the writing process a little bit. Some of the riffs, at least some, of them I remember you like sending in demos. I remember you playing with Casey mm -hmm. on tours. I can't remember which, but like you were fiddling. We had that little thing. And you were just like jamming and would record on Casey's like makeshift little studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we just didn't want to like procrastinate on it. So we already started writing and then, uh, I don't know. A, a lot of those ideas we didn't end up using, mm -hmm. you know, but, that, but those are the, those ideas are like the, the spokes on the ladder that get you to the top, you know, right. Yeah. You oh, figured yeah. Out yeah they were, but yeah, see what's interesting about this, Nick, is that they just threw this question to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as I've personally known Harm's Way, the the core of Harm's Way has been James Chris Bow, and James Chris Bow just said, "Nick, tell him when you started writing this this record, <laughs> essentially." Mm -hmm. So to to have a a newer member be the step up and say, "Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna try some stuff," is a very rare thing. Was that daunting going into this? Not really, because honestly, like Post Human was pretty involved too, like. Definitely okay, good. got to like write a big chunk of that with everyone. So uh, I kind of felt like I got the formula of what kind of like made something sound like harm's way kind of, and then mm. just, mm. I don't know, adding like frills to that to not make it like one note or whatever. But sure. uh, I mean, it, it was daunting for sure. Like writing in general, I'm sure it always is like for everyone, you know, but are you how there's a lot of the, something that has like become, one of the like the signature things on this record is like the wah chord, you know. <laughs> so yeah, okay. The like open thing is that the Nick? That's the Nick special. Uh, that's definitely one of them. Uh, I feel like we kind of found that trying to like not just do the single string thing or like just having shit sound like just down tuned power chords. So yeah, uh, having like a melodic kind of like dissonant thing over everything. I feel thing. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, I, corn, whatever. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of it on posthuman with like the yeah. ugly, the ugly machine chord and stuff. Like it's definitely mm -hmm. there. But Nick, um, Nick's got these spider hands, and he plays core. He plays shapes that like my hands have never been in. <laughs> he just comes up with things that that I don't know how they work, but they work. And he's very good at like. I, does every song have one? Every song has like a weird chord. Yeah, they've got some, there's some fucking, there's some chords where I just think, what the fuck is, how did he do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every song is a gimmick or we try to like make every, not, not a gimmick, but like every song was supposed to like have its own like thing kind of. Yeah. So. Do you want to um, talk about the pedal? 
Oh yeah, uh, the, the the pitchfork, the magic um, sauce, dude. Yeah, uh, that was definitely used a lot on a lot of the ideas. Um, we used it a little bit on Post Human. Was playing with Vane like in the last couple of years, and like they used that too. Um, kind of like a lot more than we did still on this new record, and in a different way mostly. But um, Jeremy's like a psycho with like guitar shit, so like Big time. definitely playing with them helped me like. You know, I try not to be like directly influenced by what they were doing because I didn't want to like bite what they were doing, but made me kind of like look at my guitar differently or like what pedals I was using and kind of see where I could just add like flavor to shit. That, I mean, that's exactly that's exactly what it does is that pedal kind of elongates the neck. <laughs> you know, it, it makes mm. it makes stuff just be lower or if you're playing something high and you go from low and then back to normal. It makes it go like it, it oh, does cool. lots of cool shit. And it definitely like now there's a whole new thing that we do when we're playing some of these songs where it's like you're playing rhythmically with your right hand and with your left foot at the same time, which Chris is used to, but I'm not used to. Yeah, there's like a whole drum thing to it. Speaking of pedals, <laughs> I think it took me five or six times all the way through to even process that the HM2 is basically gone. Yeah. Oh yeah. We didn't use it at all. Um, I don't even think we used one on post human. We didn't, we used the swollen pickle. Yeah. A, l- a little bit, yeah. a little bit, which is, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which yeah, is, you did. which is, you know, it, it's like a version of an HM2. It's like a more controlled version. And then we used it live. I did. Did you use yours live? I tried it and it sounded kind of crazy. So you weren't digging I, yeah, it. Yeah. I was, I was just good on it but because like we play older songs that have such hm2 that the swollen pickle was like easier to control so swollen mm. pickle is unbelievable yeah what <laughs> what did you use for for heads i know the clean was bad cat oh for uh, for the new record uh yeah we used the bad cat for the cleans and then honestly it was just like two different evh right? uh, evhs yeah. with different tubes and then uh i think like a 6505 it was yeah. just like all evh Shit, baby. Shout out Fender, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Eddie Edward Van Halen. Edward Van. Excuse me? Mm-hmm. Harm's way powered by Van Halen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank God. All right. Let's get into the record a little bit. Mm. So Nick is Nick is Nick is spilling sauce everywhere, right? And bringing riffs to the table. Casey was like the sauce filter. Yeah, it, so I, that's exactly uh, what I was going to say. Is <laughs> Casey and Nick both live in Milwaukee. And okay. were, you, were you guys living together? Yeah, they were living together for a minute, and then over the pandemic, you didn't live together, but would like... Oh, uh, we still did, actually. You still, yeah, oh, so yeah. they lived together. So like, okay. Nick's playing COD, getting kill streaks, writing riffs, <laughs> and Casey's yeah. Casey's... Who knows what that guy does? Every day was like, get up, take a shower, put on the hazmat suit, go to the store and spend like 400 bucks at the grocery store, (laughs) get home and then start playing guitar and demoing shit with Casey. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I I feel like it was just a summer camp thing of that. And then four years later, here's this record. Dude, we would try to do like (laughs) Zoom practices when like lockdowns were real, right? So it would be... It would be the three of us individually in our homes, Nick and Casey together. And then Casey would stream on like a secret Twitch channel, just Ableton. And there would be like, you know, a few seconds delay, but we could like say like uh, Chris could uh, like try to articulate drums or like whatever. And it was fucking so difficult. Yeah, It was that so challenging. Awful. Yeah, it was in the beginning. The demos were like really fucking funny too. Like the program drumming and shit came such a long way over like the course of doing all of it. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I kind of wish I would have brought some of the old demos, but I don't think I could like bear to show anyone. <laughs> they, like. they won't see the light of day. So, Chris and James, let's talk for a second. What's up? Because because you guys are the have been the secret sauce this whole time. <laughs> Chris, James does the one finger writing where he goes, wouldn't this be sick? And then you guys translate that. Mm-hmm. And now you have a whole other language being spoken on the, on the other guitar and bass player side. Are you guys like relieved that you have, that you can do less now? I know for me, uh, I think like it's because we've been a band for so long. I think like, you know, having Casey and Nick come into the picture um, just like opened up 
a whole different path of, of writing. And, um, I know for, you know, for me personally, you know, I don't want to say I, I was like tapped out, but you know, I writing music before Nick officially joined the band in like 2015 was becoming increasingly more difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, cause I, I mean, he kind of really started, uh, helping us write, um, probably about a fourth of the way in of post-human. And like, that was kind of the thing that really got us to the end of post-human. And then obviously, you know, I, I honestly don't think any of us wrote a full riff or song on common suffering except him. Um, wow. so like just, I, I just kind of look at it as almost like him revitalizing the band in a way, um, to make us sound like harm's way, but in a, a, a more advanced, uh, riff, riff writing way, I guess. It is advanced. And Chris, mm-hmm. uh, you have Casey who's very good at programming things and Nick, who's also a drummer. Mm-hmm. So what was that like for you? Cause like Nick will say something to you or you'll say something to Nick about a drum thing. That's even over my head. And then Casey will just like, Oh, okay. And just like do it. Chris, I feel like you're always going to do your thing regardless though. Cause your thing is so iconic to me. <laughs> yeah. The Chris no, you know, it, for, for sure. And you know, like I think the, like the cool, you know, like I've known Nick for like a really long time at this point, you know, and, and we, we played in other bands together, like kind of like leading up to him joining harm's way. And like in a lot of ways, you know, it, I, I fucking wanted Nick in harm's way for forever, you know, <laughs> and like it, luckily happened you know and I think like you know Nick understands like my drumming in like a really cool way where you know he can kind of like almost like I don't know even in the way I think Nick writes riffs he like writes riffs with my kind of like style in mind you know and there's like a shared language so to speak I think like between he and I in terms of how we like approach parts or what kind of drum stuff we want to hear you know um in a lot of ways it's like it's like pretty like refreshing for me because you know, because I think the like literacy, both like Nick and Casey have for percussion, we can just like bounce a lot off each other. And and it's definitely like expanded, um, you know, uh, just, just who I am as a drummer even more, if, if that makes sense, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think like, um, that was, that was, that was a really cool component. I think with, with, with common suffering is like, you know, just like kind of pushing, pushing the bounds and having you know, other people to kind of help hold me accountable to that as well. Over the years, learning Harm's Way songs just peripherally, <laughs> you are maybe, you and like Hatebreed are like the number one air drummable bands. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to getting really comfortable with these songs. <laughs> Silent Wolf, I'll fucking, I could probably, I'm probably already there with, so that's good. Yeah, you're pretty quick James, with, them, lyri- with them feet. What was that? You got them feet down for sure. Oh, I'll fucking, I got Chris's feet all day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally in many different spaces, you know, whether yeah. it's fucking Fluff Fest and the Trek Republic. At Fluff or, Fest, I got your feet, yeah. hands, balls, and all. Huh? What's cool about this episode, by the way, is it'll come out like as the tour starts. Amazing. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> how does that how does that feel are you guys are you guys nervous leading up to this thing first one in five years or whatever yeah a little bit I got some some anxiety for sure like dude we played we played a, a fest in toronto a couple of weeks ago and and the wheels damn near came off ah. you know it's just kind of shaking off some rust and stuff really um no pun intended Mm. Let that be the wheels and then now put them back on yeah. <laughs> and blow yeah. some socks off. All right. Gorgeous looking record. Look at this thing. Chris, you want to talk about the album art? Yeah, please do. Yeah. I know this is V2, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> v, V2 indeed, but we won't get into V1. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, no, V1 was great. Yeah, b- beautiful. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, um, the album art was done by, um, this dude, Corn Brownlee and, um, you know, we kind of came across this stuff, um, while we were trying to kind of pivot and, um, find work that felt 
you know, pretty, pretty relatable to the lyrical themes and just like the overall vibe of the record. It, it's a, it's, it's an atom bomb of, of bodies, right? Kind of. I don't mm. know. I don't know if it's bomb. Yeah. It I seems mean, like. Corn, I not cloud. Yeah. Like a, like a platform. Oh, yeah. Like and it's think, raining. Man. Yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> raining, <laughs> raining, raining men. Yeah. Um, you know what they say? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> No, I think it's a it's raining genderless bodies, but I think oh. um, <laughs> I hallelujah, think, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> I think uh, you know, Corn actually described it as like a brain, right? A brain in mm. uh, in uh, oh, yeah. in an interview that he and I both were a part of oh, recently. Yeah. Open open up and hold up the uh, the gatefold, like the the whole inside. That's my personal favorite part is the tunnel of bodies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like think, dude, I think when we like got that when, when, when we got like the various pop potentials or whatever. And like, that was included. Like, I just think that is the creepiest, coolest. Whose idea was doing sideways back cover. Ridge Ryan did the, uh, oh. did the layout, you know, um, Legend. with like Corin's, you know, work, so to speak, you know, and I think that was just kind of some, some brainstorming he and I had kind of worked on together, but the execution was, was awesome overall. You know, mm-hmm. I, 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 I love the art, you know, to like Bo's point, you know, um, I think like all of it just obviously creates this like sense of panic and anxiety, like kind of looking, looking at it. And and, like, initially when I came across the pieces, I was like, that's it, you know? Mm. Um, and just like kind of told these, told these dudes, like, let's, let's try to act on this. And like, luckily corn, corn was down and he's been fucking awesome to work with ever since. Yeah. I mean, a record that looks the way it sounds is obviously something as, as, as music fanatics, it's yeah. important to all of us. With Post Human, I immediately I loved the cover art, but I didn't necessarily think like when I first saw it, it wasn't like that's it. This one I did feel that way. Mm-hmm. Like the second I grew to love Post Human, mm-hmm. and like I do think that it's the perfect cover art for that record. With this one, the second we saw it and came up with the album title, I thought like that's perfect. Yeah, it's a great mm-hmm. vibe. Mm-hmm. Tell me about the mm-hmm. title, James. For the record. Yeah. Or just for the, uh, I mean that the I mean, common way. suffering, I guess, was more of a, a collective decision. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple ideas. There, I mean, Chris could probably speak more to the the um, record title than I can, as far as uh, where it came from. But um, I, I just like Bo said, when when I heard it, I I was like, that's definitely the one. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. That I that I wanted to use, um, just because I think you know, after the last years of, I think our lives and like uh, what a lot of us had been through personally. And obviously, you know, I felt like we all could understand that there's a shared amount of suffering that went on in in the last years. And I think that that was kind of just a good way to, you know, connect with each other through the, through the album title. Agreed. Yeah. I remember deliberating in the hotel room. What was the name of that pizza place that we kept getting that we were just crushing <laughs> it, it was, was like uh, a lady's name right it was uh like roses or something no oh friend zones friend zones dude colin great we were just talking about it the other day great sweet sauce <laughs> oh that's that one. <laughs> yeah for, dude just like uh we were how many slices did we each crush uh, we, like <laughs> i mean fuck <laughs> like a whole pizza each it yeah was I mean, like, we got like six pizzas <laughs> Yeah, there was there rocked. was there was like one night I think where we all demolished our own pizza. Ah, fuck, that didn't feel good. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it's, the only, it's the only way to do it. With the sweet sauce, just goes down so smooth. Yeah, it, it does. really yeah. does. Yeah. Really does. Yep. Tell me about uh, working with Will before we get into the songs themselves. He's the fucking man. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah. Can't can't say enough good things about him. He I was mean, really a, a guy. I think especially. So like we can, we can say like pre pro was all of us sitting in a circle and then with Will and we were just like going over the songs, going over parts and like demoing them with him. There was never, I don't think there was an idea that he wasn't willing to like try Mm -hmm. or willing to like hear out or willing to like like everything is at least during it, especially during that, because that was like the most of my involvement until we, until you tracked, Mm -hmm. it was like, it, it, like he was just like, yeah, let's try it. Yeah, cool. That sounds good. Like he was just very, 
the environment is, is supremely creative and like open and it's very yeah. conducive, I think, to creating, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think I can speak for myself in, in, I don't think the lyrics and the cadences of the songs would have turned out the same uh, without him. I think like, you know, that's one thing he really helped me with uh, personally. And I mean, I think we could all agree. Like I know with like tracking, he was just so positive. Like even if the take sucked, like he would, he would like make you feel like you could do better, but not in like a condescending way. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, just like, hey, I want to get the best out of you because you're better, you know, than than what you just did. And I just remember, like, after finishing a take and him just like jacking you up, and and like it just like I know that sounds cheesy, but like, but it's true. It's, it's absolutely true. He's just laughing because you said jacking Jack, you up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's jacking me off. But uh, you'd finish a take and what would jack you off right away? Dude. That's a hell of a producer, right there. One, he amazing. might as well have. That's how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> but, so uh, is is Will for this record? Like you said, Nick and Casey changed the game in terms of the way you write. Is Will kind of the the other puzzle piece? I would say so. He's Probably. definitely a big one, I think. Um, he does have like a really good uh, constructive coach vibe, kind of like like James is saying, but. Uh, <laughs> But also, I know. Like, like, no, no, myself. yeah. Let's try one more. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> that was sick, but like. <laughs> I also had so much annoying shit that I wanted to try. And he was like always down to like hear us, you know, figure it out and like hear it back or whatever. And he'd either be like, yeah, that sucks. Or like, that's actually way better. So Nick has this unbelievable ability to come up with a riff and we play the riff all together. And by, by the time I'm like grasping it, he will be like, now for the B, like that's A and I'm B, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And like pre-pro and then even tracking was that times how oh, yeah. much. We, we changed a ton of shit at pre-pro and then we went to tracking and we changed it like a ton more shit. Yeah. And then after, <laughs> I mean, I had to go back again to track oh, one. Yeah, there were yeah. still changes like in the third session. And and after pre pro that we made like before everyone was at the studio and we actually started doing drums. Well, how like, many of these songs can you play right now? Four, because <laughs> they're just they're just up here for Nick. Uh, well, for well, dude. Being, right? I mean, but Casey would say the same thing. Nick Nick tracked all the stringed instruments on the record. I mean, we haven't played. I don't think. I mean, we we've played. We've played three as a band. Yeah, thus I'm, far. I mean, I think we're just playing the ones that, you know, we're getting prepared for tour, but mm -hmm. I, I think we, we spent the most time like digesting the shit that was written and then kind of piecing it together. So like there's a couple things in some of the songs that weren't even like organically written that way until after we were kind of like making the final changes to it in, in like the. Uh, what's the fucking room with all the monitors called? <laughs> the control room. The control room. <laughs> the, control room. <laughs> <laughs> the room full of monitors. The room with the knobs. Yeah, but but right. yeah, I mean, we we haven't we we didn't you know, Nick was really at the helm of tracking with that stuff, and even from the get go, Will Will kind of approached it really delicately, and he was like, "How would you guys feel about one person doing all the guitars and bass?" Because I prefer that as a producer. It's the way to do it. Yeah. I mean, you. I mean, it. It. It became obvious. I mean, we did it kind of in post human. Mm. Yeah. Not a hundred percent. Not hundred percent. But there were songs that I played all of, or you played all of, and I. I played bass. You played bass. Like. Mm -hmm. Um. But. I can you imagine if Casey and I also tracked? Well, how yeah. long this session would have taken? There were like so many on the fly changes that like. If we changed something, right. then I I knew it on all the parts already. So it was just like yeah, way no faster point. to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about the record. Okay. I want to talk about the tracks. That's right. why we're here at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. Fucking <laughs> tracks, man. Silent Wolf, track one. Was that? I know how hard it is to, to pick an opener. Yeah. Dude. Mm -hmm. we'll when, did get you, there. when did you figure this figure out that this was the opener? What <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. the deliberation over the sequence of this record was like Months, yeah, I mean, uh -huh. yeah, it took months to figure it out. Yeah. It took so long. I do think this one we we <clears throat> felt was an opener pretty soon, though. I think in pre pro when it was done, yeah, 
at least half of us were like leaning that way. Was this song um, written in the studio? No, there was like one riff that I had kind of like written at home and then like Casey and I were fucking around with the riff during pre-pro just playing guitar and it wasn't a song at all yet. And then uh, during pre-pro, there was a day that you guys all went out and did something. I don't remember what you did. James and I went to a Phillies game and we came back Ah, and you were just in the hotel room writing this riff yeah, and you're like, yo, in the lab. you're like, yo, the check B it lab. out. Um, and I was, and I just said to myself, fuck dude, I heard like, I heard like the BPM of like the double bass and I was like, God yeah. damn it. <laughs> it. It was still but, way different. But, but, but damn, yeah, is yeah, this sick. Yeah. 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 It, it, Chris kept calling it the speed metal riff. <laughs> Cause it was, the, the riff was like the pre-chorus and there's like this little picked out kind of like, like, you, you know, like dude, at the gates picked out yeah, type yeah, thing, even yeah. though the riff's not like that. But, yeah. uh, that that had a way more like main role in the in the idea originally, but um, yeah, Chris hated it. And for the record, we we weren't ditching out on recording and letting Nick figure it out. It was it, it was, was a weekend. It was, it was a day a off. Yeah, no, it was yeah, a day yeah. off. Casey and I just wanted to work out it. Right. We're like, let's figure out one more one more idea for for the shit. So yeah. no days off for Nick. You're different, <laughs> man. You have a you have, you just have a different grind set. You know, mm. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. That's why you're the writer guy now. <laughs> what I think was cool about that song is like, obviously it started in like one way and like taking it to the studio, it ended up in a totally different place. And, you know, initially, yeah, it definitely sounded like a speed metal riff. Cause it was like <laughs> happening over and over and over again. I think the program drums were like totally different than what I ended up like writing for the track, you know, yeah, um, in my head, it had more of like a, almost like a Deftones picked out like vibe, but I, but I get what you're saying and why, why you like heard it that way. <laughs> it was definitely not meant to be uh, a speed metal riff. Dude, who even uses that term? <laughs> Chris. <laughs> speed metal? Yeah. yeah. People it's over like an, 50. 50 like speed metal is term. 50 plus. Yeah, yeah. Good. I am over 50. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Did anybody not get their way when it came to the sequencing? Was like, is there one thing that one of you guys is like, I'll, I'll concede, but you're wrong. <laughs> I don't remember. Mm. It's hard. Yeah, it, it's it's tough to say, you know. Um, we're, we're, we're literally talking, uh, I mean, song, three months. I think yeah. song two is the biggest challenge. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, there's, there was a tough. B. Yeah, there was like, there was a B side on the record that, you know, that oh, definitely okay. took a lot of deliberation over and just like back and forth on over like whether or not it should have been this one song or that song, you know, and I think where where that song would have been placed is is kind of where we felt stuck at times. Mm-hmm. The funny um, part is, though, I'm, I'm I'm really happy with the sequencing, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. sequencing. Yeah, ended absolutely. up Awesome. Once yeah. once we because it, it was funny because I, I think right away we knew the bookends. We knew the opener, and I think we all agreed on the closer. So it was kind of like, and, but then there's, there's, there's the shit because it's like, well, Terrorizer is a weird song. We'll get there. Um, Undertow is a weird song. We'll get there. You gotta have, there's so many like little moving pieces about where to put stuff that mm-hmm. like we all kind of, you don't want to put the weird songs on like a beat on the B side of the record, which doesn't really matter anymore. But, you know, you don't want to make it seem like a less important song. On Post Human, we had The Gift, which was a song that Casey made and was then like kind of enhanced in the studio. That ended up being kind of a B-side song that was like a little underplayed, I would say, because I think that song's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't want that to happen. It's such a difficult thing. It's just where music is, sadly. You know, you yeah. spend all you, you, t- you spend this time and this pa- on all your energy into making like an epic closer. And then most people just don't get to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And, ho- and I think hopefully that changes. Yeah, totally. And I think that was like a little bit of a paradigm shift for us too. you know, obviously like working with Will, he was, you know, we're so focused on sequencing. We're so focused on like the flow of a record. And he was just basically like, well, look, you know, maybe think about it this way in terms of like the current like attention span of like music yeah. listeners. We're you know? very like, we're very analog vinyl minded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was very much like digital sh- the playlist. He was like, it really, you can't think about it in the old way. Like, obviously, for the vinyl itself, it matters. But the majority of people are not going to consume this record that way. I'm curious, um, and I'll, I'll figure out a special prize for who's closest. <laughs> what do you guys think my favorite song is? Oh. Yeah, knowing me, first. knowing yeah. me yeah, so yeah. well, what do you think my favorite? I have two <laughs> favorites. Okay, so there can be, there's two right answers? There's two right answers. Nick, you go Ooh. first. Uh, 
Or do you want me to go first? Because I know him. The first one I'm going to back my ass. You go last, Bob. Uh, all right. I'm going to guess Sadist Guilt as one of them. Okay. Nick guess uh, Sadist Guilt. It's a good one. one. Uh, so we're guessing two favorites? Yeah. All right. Yeah, what are my and two favorites? Undertow. What'd you say? And Undertow. Undertow. Okay. I'm going to guess Heaven's Call and Undertow. So I'm gonna, guess. I'm gonna go with Bo on that one. I, th- I, th- I think Heaven's Call and Undertow. So Please. I also was gonna say Heaven's Call, but I was <laughs> gonna go with Devour being the second one that okay. you liked. All right, so Heaven's Call is my favorite song. Yeah, but but ter- Terrorizers by my Ooh, other favorite song. lovely. Fuck the, the second. So you you guys playing that one? Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's on the set list. Yeah, it's the goal. Um, we're like currently in rehearsals and stuff like that, and the goal is to obviously make that work in a in a live setting for sure. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I can't wait to hear that big industrial song with Big Pit is like yeah. the thing <laughs> that you guys do better than anyone to me. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I really you um, don't. You're good at doing both together where a lot of bands are like, no, nah, we got to just do one at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really like Terrorizer. Yeah. I really. Yeah, it's the same. Great. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, Heaven's Call, Terrorizer. That's interesting for you. It's a banger, dude. You guys are going to have, you might have to play that one after this episode comes out. <laughs> good call. <laughs> yeah. Track two, Denial. We talked about how hard it was. Track two mm-hmm. is like. That's the hardest place to be because that's if they're going to fall off after track one, mm-hmm. you got to fucking bang them out with something crazy mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What tell me about denial? The interesting thing about denial is your brother beefs denial, <laughs> does he? Yeah, it's, it's, we got, it's we the got, one I think he said it's the one song he doesn't like. Yeah, yeah. so the fuck Taylor. Um, <laughs> we don't. I mean, we, I, we don't have to talk about that. Something that we've been talking about and deliberating about a lot is like, this is our first tour in four years. People want to hear a lot of stuff, and trying mm-hmm. to figure out, yeah, you know, what songs off the new record not to play is like pretty challenging. Um, so yeah, denial is not on the set list currently, but that you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's lots of shows. Could change. You can bust yeah. it out. But he, yeah. mm-hmm. what you're describing is like, you guys are a legacy band now. You've been a band for damn near 20 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Almost 18. Yeah. You've written a lot of songs that people like in the in that amount of time. You're facing the peril that every that every like great legacy band faces. Of okay, do we play the old the first record all the way through, or do we play what we want? Um, um, Hollow Cry. Track three. Track three. Let's talk about it. Uh, that was that was like another song that kind of came, we came into the studio with it kind of sounding one way and definitely like changed over the course of like pre-production, you yeah. know? And I think, you know, obviously there's like a, it's kind of a bit of like a, a noise rock vibe to it, a Melvin Z mm. vibe mm-hmm. to it. And, um, you know, like a heavy bass presence, you know? Um but uh, I, I think obviously with like refinement, Nick, you know, you ended up taking to that that song to like a really really cool place. Yeah, initially I feel like we were going for more of like a similar to like Temptation, kind of like mm-hmm. like Jesus Lizardy type mm-hmm. like bass driven thing. Oh, interesting. So it, it, yeah, it had a lot mm-hmm. more of that initially, and then um, but it was kind of like on the rockier side instead of sounding like creepy like Temptation. So kind of wanted to just like make it sound a little more fucked up. James, did you go to the Coles Live show this weekend? I did. I went to the Coles Live show this weekend. <laughs> you have a good time? It's fantastic. You watch Great from time. the crowd? Watch from the crowd, just like, uh, you know, a normal citizen, you know? That's right. Set list was banging or what? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, they played uh, the last block of songs was like, was all the heavy hitters. Oh, really? Yeah. Whoa. Was, yeah, uh, so I was like, it was like, who holds the truth? Yep. Then Fucking. cold is life. Then they ended with little from the world, which like, you know, that's probably the top three. Yeah. 
I think the, my personal favorite Cole is Life song is actually Terror Zone, though. Mm. They played mm-hmm. that, like, right? No, they yeah, did, but, but they, early, they played right? it like earlier on, yeah. second. But I saw um, an awesome video of Freddie fixing Jeff's mic stand. Did you see that video? That's cool. There's just like a cool little mm-hmm. moment when even he's like looking up, like they're like laughing at each other. It's just cool stuff like that. I, I, That's I, respect. I re- yeah, man, mm-hmm. it was sick. Yeah, no. Show James, us, show James us. I would fix cool. your mic stand any fucking day. Of the week. I, I think you have, actually. <laughs> actually, 100%. more so. I think probably more so to, uh, more so Chris's drums you fixed more than anything. Yeah. That, whenever that China <laughs> falls, you know damn well I'm going to be there. <laughs> yep, yep. My informal uh, drum tech, Colin Young. <laughs> Yo, is Bo ever showed you the picture where Chris's... Uh, Tom fell off the drum riser <laughs> and I'm holding it like <laughs> mid mid and laughing and laughing. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very funny picture. I'll, I'll send dude, it to you, Colin. Yeah. Dude. Gunk. <laughs> yeah. Gunk. Dude. We dude, one time we played, uh, Guadalajara <laughs> in Mexico and Chris sat down at the drum set and literally went like, bah! and Every piece oh. fell apart. <laughs> Exploded like, like a fucking and Lego drum set. Literally like a like a Lego drum set. And all of us just laughed. Like even Chris was just like, fuck. Yeah, First and, note of the set. And I'm pretty sure I was like on like a drum riser too. Yeah, and like this so like high. this Tom just fell and just bounced and bounced <laughs> and bounced and bounced. And you know, we just had one of those moments where we were just Did you pause or died. did you just keep going? I don't remember. Well, I think actually. we actually had had to pause because at that point, like, I think multiple nothing. drums were no longer in the set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like they they had fallen yeah. off the stage, just unplayable. But you know, it's like one of those moments you're like, dude, we're in fucking Guadalajara. Yeah, and, yeah, know, yeah. Who gives yeah. Shit? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's the What's the worst thing that's happened to one of you on? Like, who has the worst single incident on stage? Is it that? Is it James um, breaking his arm? That was bad. That was not good, yeah. But but that didn't actually do anything to the set. Yeah, that, that was song one too. <laughs> He's a trooper. He didn't even he finish didn't, the yeah. set. My, my art. dude, one of the craziest things that James, James will tell you was that after all of that, he drove home <laughs> from the city back to Naperville with one arm, with the bad arm, to prove that it was okay. <laughs> with the bad one, I I mean, so I didn't want to admit that it was broken. <laughs> So, so I drove home with, with my broken arm to prove to myself that it was good enough to, but I fell asleep and I woke up. And when I say I was in the most pain I've probably ever been in, that was like, yeah. I just moved my arm just like a little bit. And I like just drove myself to the hospital because yeah, I knew so it was broken. Was, like, fucked up. was it like purple? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. My, it was like. It was like a uh, an arm wrestler's forearm. It was just Fuck yeah. fucking so Popeyes. Bad. What's uh, basically, dude? That was a crazy day because that was, you know, John had just quit the band, right? And and both jo- Johns and Hofacker, yeah. yeah. And you broke your arm. Two members quit the band, and we were supposed to leave for a tour in what five days? Yeah, that weekend. Yep. Well, James, did you hear uh, Caution's <laughs> response? I mean, I, I, I haven't uh, watched the full, full video, but I've mm. talked to him about it. And he mm. says he talks shit on me. Is that, is that true? I a wouldn't. Little bit. There's a little bit of, you know, fuck James. You know? <laughs> as, as much as I would say you threw at him. 100%. When we, when we did oh, the episode. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally don't care. Yeah, but, but very friendly. What's the no, worst thing that's happened to you? Like, <sighs> stuff has definitely fallen. You've bled a couple times. One time... Colin, his, his hand. right, his, my, my hand, my hands, dude, my hands. <laughs> One time, uh, dur- I, we were in Ohio. I think your right pedal broke and you played scrambled with only your left foot. That's happened. That was pretty yeah. cool. I mean, dude, like my shit just breaks all the goddamn time. Colin, you've seen it Amen. time and time again. You fixed it time <laughs> and time again, dude. Time. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's- the amount of times my kick, like my, my kick pedals just come off or the <laughs> kick drum is just slid away dude remember the one time in toronto how you know we played this like (laughs) united steelworkers like union hall or whatever and i'm on like a drum rug and we're just playing on a tile floor but the problem was you were 100 percent on the drum rug Uh, yeah none of the feet of any of the drum hardware were on the tile yeah 
Okay. And, so he's and, on an island. Yeah. And I'm just, and you know, by the middle of the set, like I had just moved and I was like in the, <laughs> mi- I was essentially like in the middle of the, it's like a magic carpet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like everything that was, moved that was together. Insane. Dude. But uh, so he's on, he's on a, a rectangle that every time he hits something, it's vibrating. And literally by the end of the set, he was in front of all of us. <laughs> that was the first time we ever played. And the only time we ever played frontal lobe. Yeah. Frontal I lobe think. all together. Yep. Um, yeah. You, Fuck you've dude. broken dude, At the least worst it was is, together. Yeah, yeah. The worst I think in my opinion is you breaking a snare. That's happened a lot. Yeah. That's happened a lot. Just at the bottom snare, just snapping. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you're just playing. Yeah, you're just essentially just playing a bongo at that point. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) like, you know, obviously, like the one thing that comes to mind, like in terms of like the hardest set we played was, you know, playing playing Averill, you know, and in. Oh God! It's like a hundred plus degree, and I like just threw oh. up. Anchors up, yeah. You know, <laughs> threw up on stage while playing because I was just straight up heat exhaustion. And Dude, I wanted, that set wanted was to crazy. die. Yeah. That set was insane because <laughs> that was also the set that save a string. His, Dude, he okay. used to keep oh, his yeah, strings. Electric, yeah, yeah. He he used to not cut the extra ends off of his strings, and he used to say, "If my if I have long hair, so does my guitar." Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> he bent he bent down. <laughs> <laughs> Only Seba. <laughs> he bent down at one point, oh. like he crouched to grab something, and the high E string went into an outlet, like into one of the prongs of the outlet, and got white hot, burnt his hand in a straight line, and then melted the nut down to the to the fret. So like his high E was useless. And then during the set, during the the breeding grounds like noise part at the end of the song, grabbed someone else's guitar. And used it like a slide on his own guitar, like turned strings to strings and went ring, ring, and just made noise. All the meanwhile, Chris is like having a stroke. There's a garbage can next to it. Like, shout out Virgos though. Oh yeah, yeah, Vir- yeah. the Vir- Virgos record fucking rips. Record's um, amazing. What's That's the worst thing that's happened to you? I, you've never like fallen or anything, dude. Uh, two worst things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The first one was getting sick for FYA when I got oh, food poisoning. I got a picture for that. Yeah, I, have a, I have a picture of Nick on an airplane, unaltered. He's literally green. Green man. Dude, he looks he, like a cartoon I, person. Dude, in the line for TSA, <laughs> I had to leave to like puke in a garbage can. And then no one let me back in my spot in the line. Everyone just looked at me like puking. And he, then, he had to fucking wipe his mouth with his, yeah. with his own extra underwear. Yeah. Poor bastard. <laughs> threw him away. Uh, <laughs> And dude, that, yeah, that was fucking awful. <laughs> and then, dude, and then you, we got to the gate, and you're like, "All right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom." And they were literally like the the ticket counter people were like, "If you guys aren't on the jetway in the next sixty seconds, it's leaving without you." Yeah. So I had to run and grab this poor bastard who's like sick, and be like, "Nick, you, whatever is going on, you have to get up and leave right now." <laughs> and we got to the gate, and the. The person was like looking at their watch, like counting down for us, like a <laughs> fucking cop. <laughs> <laughs> that that was fucked up. And then he slept for like fourteen hours in a rental car in Florida. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. And and did backup vocals like that set. And every time I like felt like I was about to fucking puke again. That, mm. that Dude, was. I don't know how you did that. I don't. Well, either. actually, I do because I yeah. also did that once in Perth. Yeah, that's right. I had food poisoning. Um, you sang with food awful. poisoning. Dude, God. it's the worst I've ever felt in my life. Yeah, I don't was, know if I've ever done that. I was throwing up all day, like literal, probably should have went to the hospital because I was so dehydrated. Yeah. Right. And like, I was just sleeping at this person's house. Sorry, I don't know the person's name that we were sleeping Josh, at. I think. Was it Josh? Josh, I think. It was. Not, not Housey, a different Josh. Yeah, yeah. Joshua Clayton, I believe. And then. Uh, no, 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 no. Different no, Josh. No. Was, What's uh, a Sea Dog? <laughs> what was his John name? John Hatfield. Dude. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it, no. he, he was in the band, the others. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, not Josh. What, I, I, well, anyway, Josh speed Josh. our, uh, our tour manager, Claire picked me up about 20 minutes before our set and took me there. And I wish there was a video. Cause I literally just stood there, did not move once and just yeah. sang yeah. like, like a statue basically. Yeah. That was a sick How show. was the yeah. set? How was the show? Yeah. It was good. Dude, it was like ladies night at this club in Perth. And it was like, it was sold out. It was insane. 
They were they were there for us, for James, baby. necessarily, but they yeah, were there until I walked off stage and vomited. I think that was I felt <laughs> Damn. Well, I, that's literal. I, that's that's what happens in Detroit Rock City. It's the same. I never thing. felt yeah. worse. Yeah. Worse well, in my life. What uh, what's the other one, Nick? Uh, the other one was uh, fuck. What tour was this? I feel like it was our headliner. No, it was before the Black Dolly Murder tour, and oh. I don't know why this happened. We played this venue on our headliner. I think it was like the second. Uh, Posthuma headline show was at the same place, but uh, dude, the first show of Black Dahlia, I broke a string on stage. Something wasn't set up with like my other guitar, and uh, there were no extra strings for whatever reason. Uh, had to like leave the stage to get a different guitar. The strap locks on that guitar were like a different brand than what was on my other shit. Oh, and, and there was, wasn't uh, even a strap for it. Lost Horizon in Syracuse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there wasn't I even remember. a strap for this guitar. So I had to play the rest of the set with a guitar that was meant to be in C, tuned down to B, so oh. everything was really loose, no guitar strap. So I was sitting on a crate of water, water like yeah. side stage, playing the rest <laughs> of the set, sitting down on a fucking case of water. But... Uh, yeah. So that was kind of crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that looked to everyone else. I'm sure fucking insane. It, it felt good. really bad. But and that was and that was one of your first like few tours with yeah. us. Uh, Two, right? Yeah, maybe like the third yeah, I, one. I remember yeah. like that. So Casey, he's not here to represent himself, but there's a thing called Casey's luck that is truly <laughs> unbelievable. Some examples include uh, the 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 thing that made us realize was he bought like a. It was not white. It was like a light beige hoodie in near, um, it was, it what's was the venue in Middle Boston? East. Yeah, the Middle East. Near there, there was like a shoe store around the corner. He bought like a nice, like either a Nike or Adidas, like a good, you know, like a heavy duty hoodie. <laughs> and like 30 seconds into the drive after we left, because he had just bought it, like I remember turning around and looking, <laughs> and he was just looking down, like shaking his head with coffee all over the front of this brand new hoodie that he had just spent however much on. And it was, it was, I think it was that, at that moment where you're like, I'm making an Instagram called Casey's Luck. Yeah. I mean, mm. what's funny is, I mean, he, here's just uh, some of the things that have happened. His car. I gave him a car when I got a new one. Well, you sold him a for two hundred dollars. Okay. You basically gave him. <laughs> yeah, right. You gave him a car. That's You're, gave. That's I, gave. You, I retract. You gave him a car. It got yeah. stolen <laughs> <laughs> within a couple months. He the same in the same day that he bought that hoodie, he bought a pair of shoes that he later just was like, yo, these shoes suck. <laughs> he, it, he bought like these neon orange Nikes. Remember? He also lost his wallet before buying the hoodie. Oh yeah. But he got it back. Very lucky. He got it back. Yeah. He got lost, it back yeah, but he lost his fucking wallet. He's lost his wallet like three times since I've known him. <laughs> what else, Nick? <laughs> Dude, I don't, I don't want to throw him out of the bus. This is no, 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 it's, it's he, he bought, he bought those shoes did not return them. Knew he didn't like them right away, and it was from a retail store. Like, he definitely couldn't return them, probably. Yeah, but, yeah definitely. Uh, <laughs> the car that got stolen, there was, like, this this fuse was fucked up uh, under the hood, and, like, the key would not come out of the ignition. So there was always a key just, like, locked and loaded, ready to ready to rip. So, so you can't really like, say it got stolen. It got... Well, no, well, hold on. It got hold rightfully on. taken. I, he had an extra key to lock the doors, but he didn't lock the doors all the time. The doors were not locked. <laughs> and the other thing is that the the hood could be opened, the fuse could be removed, and then the key would come out of the ignition. But that was just annoying to do. So the key was just left in the ignition. Like, well, here's yeah. the thing. I had the car, obviously, first. I told him to take the fuse out. It was very easy. It took less than 10 seconds. And then it was unstealable. Right. But he he's obviously didn't do that. But... Couldn't the other the f- key thing be fixed? It was not, it was there was no fix. You had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? I imagine you need a new alternator, right? Or- I think I I literally think like I I brought it to a mechanic and he was like, you have to replace the whole electrical system because for whatever reason it triggered something to lock the key in place. It was very strange. So it was either that or just take the fuse out. <laughs> Hey, it was two hundred dollar car. I mean, you got you got a fucking that two hundred dollars for that is like highway robbery. 
You I feel like I want to I, I want to pull up the Instagram to look at the other things that <laughs> you yeah, you've posted he, on it really quick because it's it truly is like should we talk about the harm's way fucking curse? I mean, now that I think about it, maybe it's Casey's fault that yeah. our trailer got stolen. You know? <laughs> yeah. Had he not been in the band? Oh, are, the, are, are all these things post Casey being in the band? Well, uh-huh. no, no, no. We have Only a weird point thing, point. dude, where every three years something shitty happens to the band. And mm. it's not just like, oh, my, like a tour fell through or something. It's like the first one was when the two Johns quit and James broke yeah. his arm. It was 2009, eight? Oh, nine, I think. Oh, nine. That makes sense because then 2012, our van got stolen. 2015, our van got broken into in Dallas. We got lost all our passports and backpacks and computers. 2018, the trailer got stolen. 2021, our practice space flooded. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Guys, you need, so to, you need to chill next year. Don't do So going. next year, we're fucked. 2024. <laughs> well, dude. Yeah, fuck. It's going to be a hard yeah, Don't go anywhere. <laughs> all right. Stay home. Ditch. Let's see. We got, he broke his ears in Helsinki or his uh, he earbuds what? in Helsinki. He broke his, his earbuds. I, I missed oh. a word there. Uh, one time we took a flight. I don't remember where, but all of us had an extra space in between us. So we were sitting on a plane next to each other with the middle seat empty. So Chris and James, it was a Nick girl. and Casey, and then Casey was sat in the middle in another row surrounded by people. <laughs> no, no, no. The guy, the guy that was sat next to him, there was an open seat to his right, and he chose to sit next to Casey. <laughs> he wouldn't move. He, he, what? He wouldn't move. He wouldn't move. What happened there? At uh, what point a, do you just say, dude, move? A poster. It's open. It was, uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was to, it was to Paris. That, that was where the yeah. flight was to. Oh, and here's one with where he's wearing wow. an a yellow hoodie and he has stains all Another over it. He's yeah, just he just he's, chronically spills he's on He's just himself. got bad luck. Yeah. He's just one of those guys. The 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 2018 trailer theft, we all got most of our stuff back. Casey got nothing back. We we got we got we got two guitars and you got your head back. Yeah, yeah. And, it. and it was way later down the line. And I like, got drum like, hardware. Literally like a, and Chris got drum hardware. <laughs> yeah. a, a year and a half That's later all? or something like that. But yeah. But Casey, Casey got never nothing. got a trace of his no. shit. Not one thing. Because all what that means is whoever got it was like, ah, I will play a little bass. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So Chris, your kit is still just somewhere else? Well, dude, luckily, um, I was using a backline kit for that tour. Oh, so. so yeah, so so you know, but I lost the snare, I lost double bass pedals, I lost cymbals, you know. Um, Some fuckers got those. Huh? Yeah, but but and and yeah, like luckily, like I got all my hardware back because like they like ditched the trailer next door to, uh, I think in Mandalay Bay, and they just found like this, this like brutally open trailer, and for whatever reason. My stands case was still in there. I guess they, they saw it and was like, oh, this is too fucking heavy. Yeah, <laughs> let's leave heavy. it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the the biggest thing some random shit. The funniest part about that is the merch being gone. Yeah, well, some of it. Remember uh, Emma sent us some? Yeah, but Emma only, from only records, Wish. though. There we, was, we had like $8,000 worth of shirts that were, <laughs> are just gone or in a dumpster. It's <laughs> somewhere, yeah. Hopefully, they might, they're clothing. either on a landfill or on... Or people are wearing them somewhere. And yeah, a whole group somewhere. of them were in someone's RV. Yeah, it was right. in a high speed oh. chase in the in the northwest. Really? I mean, I dude, mean, yeah. The, <laughs> the story of of the trailer was like truly insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah we probably, could wow. we could probably do like a Netflix a, special. Yeah, <laughs> like a, a nice true crime podcast on that. Hundred percent. Has that? Have you guys seen any pictures pop up of like dudes in the wild wearing the shirts that were stolen? No, I don't think I don't so. Because so. no. it was the it was like the first become a machine. No, or is the Morrissey one? Yeah. It was the Morrissey one. Oh, that's a good I, one. I don't remember other stuff that we had in that. I think there's those, those, those green hoodies, the uh, post-human PSD, oh, right. HMN, right. The green, green and white hoodies. Yeah. So if you are in Vegas and you see that hoodie. Dude, also like like my guitar head, never seen uh, a that Dean. That was like the most expensive one, right? A Dean Costello, Dean's one of Dean's head that he lent to us just to try, gone. It was like an wow. early well, version the, of it. Well, actually, that had, you know, like the craziest thing about all this is like stuff was popping up all over like the western half of the United States. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Like like actually Dean's head ended up in like the Pacific Northwest at really? some, Seattle, at some right? shop. Yeah. But for some reason, like, oh, the, yeah, you know, like the dude reached out to me because he had he, he had seen, you know, our post about being robbed and um, like I think saw the gear list. 
And, you know, I got into communication with him and then he just like ghosted me, unfortunately, you oh. know? And then like the merch was in like fucking Texas or yeah. something like that. You There's know, that was in Oregon. Yeah. yeah that Oregon, was found this yeah. high speed chase, you know? Uh, I mean, dude, it was, it was, it was crazy, but you know, like clearly, you know, it was obviously part of some larger elaborate mm, kind yeah. of yeah. ring. It, it seems, you know, and our stuff was just fucking everywhere. One of I my mean, favorite moments though, to reflect upon James <laughs> is James and I were, were like ahead of the group walking to go to the van <laughs> and where we parked the van, there was, there was, there were like, like palm trees, like skinny ass fucking trees. And I literally remember walking with James and being like, man, trailer must be behind that tree. <laughs> like just, I was, I was in such denial that in my brain, yeah. the entire trailer was hiding behind a fucking palm tree because it was so What an like, unbelievable angle I've got right now. Yeah, this is this once is, a lifetime. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, I no, mean, we, we got five uh, buffet vouchers. Two. 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 Oh, two. two. That, my bad. The fucking... Parking lot attendant guy who doesn't work for the Luxor. He works for his their own thing. Took our oh police God. report or whatever. I have an amazing picture of Nick with him that I'll send <laughs> to you. Um, literally was like, look, man, I can't offer you guys much, but the funniest part about that, it was two vouchers. I used both. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Oh, you bastards. It. Hey, I was hungry. Uh, yeah. Something I want to ask about. You have your manager, best in the biz, some would say. Mm. Tell me about, because talking to Vitalo is such a unique experience every time. Like management wise or just no, like as Like as, like, yeah, like management wise and just as a guy. <laughs> I mean, dude, it's so hard because like we've been close with Vitalo since what, 2008? Yeah. 2009, yeah. you know, it's like shit. We've, we've known that dude for, for so long, you know? So, I mean, like the stories are, are fucking endless, but I guess in the context Boundless. of him. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. In the context of him being our manager, I don't know. What do you guys think? I fun. I, I, I will say before he was manager to the stars, he was, he did fucking life and death and we did the yeah. first one. And I remember him going from, like a, a, just a brunette guy to a silver Fox by the end of that tour, because it was so fucking stressful. And so just like up and down and constant, like there's never a dull moment and he did it and he kept doing it. And look where he is now. I just, I just fondly think of like his work ethic mm -hmm. and like yeah. his drive and just like the vision that he had and like it had to start somewhere. And it was just like, yeah. And I mean, I think if we want to talk about like him in general, I think he's really, you know, helped us, you know, make some decisions that we are really unsure of as a band. Um, you know, for example, you know, when, when the ghost main tour had been proposed to us, I think a lot of us were a little hesitant on how well we would do on something like that. Sure. And he was, he was kind of the one to really, you know, convince us to take the risk. And what was crazy was like, I mean, we had a great reaction. It, we were well received in that, in that, you know, in that genre of music, which I wasn't entirely expecting, but there's, there's other examples like that. And I think that he's really helped us kind of expand into other genres. Um, and he's obviously, I mean, he, you know, like Chris said, long, long time friend. And, you know, obviously it's always good to work with, you know, someone you're close with and trust. And, you know, obviously I think he's also a big part of like why we've been able to be where we're at, at this, at this point as well. So, yeah, there's a, there's a couple key things I think that have happened during our career, you know, whatever our time sure. being a band career that I think if they didn't happen, we probably would have stopped being a band. Nick and Casey. Yeah, definitely. I think Vitalo and, and moving into like, you know, just the opportunities that were, yeah, I that mean, came along therein, and uh, you sure. you having your picture taken at This Is for You Fest with your shirt off. Yeah, that was that was a that was a changing moment, <laughs> it's a pivotal moment, it's a big one. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we've come a long way since then. That's for sure. What's the the coolest about Vitalo is like, I know that if there's time, like we can go and play catch or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, like he's still like the same 
Yeah, I mean that's Vitalo is. I mean, obviously, when it's time for business, it's it's, you know, it's it's definitely you know he he can he can separate friendship and business pretty well, which mm-hmm. is which is good. Um, but it's nice to not really ever take anything too personal and mm-hmm. be be real. Let's go back to common suffering a bit. Yeah, that was a nice track yeah, four nice break. Track four, devour. Mm. Oh yeah, Sec- second Whoa. single, second single. Uh, devour. I feel like there's always got to be like a fast one. We write a few and then kind of they all get filtered out, but one that we like really like. Uh, and that was the one. Uh, the uh, the beginning riff was really shitty when we wrote it, and uh, <laughs> that changed a lot. The big pit part is one of the most unique single parts on the record. What was that? Was there like a certain band or song that inspired that? Bound and bound out, bound out. There definitely was Nick. Just say it. I mean, there's a Meshuggah. Oh yeah, I, I was listening to like that. yeah, yeah, like in the very late stages, like writing the record. I like got back into that record chaos sphere. Um, okay. I don't know if that is like if that riff was influenced by that that much for me, but like I feel like all the all the single string stuff on the record, like I don't naturally just like tend to write stuff like that. So, so yeah. anytime it's there, it's kind of like a deliberate choice. And I feel like that was more of a thing where we had the whole song, didn't have a breakdown for it yet. Uh, Casey and I were like in the lab again, you know, trying to <laughs> try to like sort some <laughs> ideas out. And uh, I was just like, Let, let's try like a single string breakdown. So, so we did that. There's like a bend, like above like the nut of the guitar or whatever. So like, yeah, bending the open note or whatever. <laughs> I feel like that, that was like, uh, one of the gimmicks on like post human that we like used a few times. And I think that's the only time the negative really one, the negative one for yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Moments are important on a, mm-hmm. on a big piece of music. And this is, this is one of the bigger moments on the record. I feel like is when it opens up to that, because this is kind of the first time where it feels like those single string harms way signature moments are used more sparingly. Mm-hmm. Cool. I think that also has a lot to do with the fact that, when I would write songs, a lot of them had single string oh, yeah. aspects to it. And Nick, that's is the complete opposite. So yeah. yeah. Nick Nick uses fucking six strings. Can you believe this guy? <laughs> yeah. I mean I, there there is I single string. I can hear it in the shit, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the the fast parts and shit have like yeah. single string. Like all that stuff, like writing D beat stuff is really natural for me. Like I feel like I like writing fast parts, but I know that people generally don't want to like listen to that much fast shit. Like I, like Chris and I used to play in like a D beat band and I feel like that's just kind of like kind of baked into what I make all the time already. So it, I don't know. And I feel like that's kind of just something that gets like stripped away after layers and layers of like going through the ideas and shit. And, and same with like the single string stuff. It's like, uh, I don't know. Just, Trying to make those moments of having that shit more special than just like doing it all the time, I guess is kind of. No, what this is at. the song where that really mm-hmm. shows, and uh, it sounds like a single. So this was a good, good pick. Yeah, right into the third single. Yep. Mm-hmm. This this block of like boom, 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 boom. Now we're not on the B side yet, but we'll talk about the B side, the whole side B of the album. Uh, tell me about Undertow because this is a special song. You got King Woman rocking both verses all the mm-hmm. way through. Is that the first time a like guest vocalist has done ba- like the entire song other than the hook? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. There was a, a strict, not strict, but there was like a, a uh, maybe an unspoken rule that like no one else would sing on anything but us until Colin, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Colin was definitely the first. Yeah. And, uh, well, I mean, Rust had a. Had, Emily. A few, had had Emily, Emily. on it, so it was, you know? it, was so was, it was Rust. Yeah, there was like two guest vocal parts on that, but I, I I think like for Undertow, I mean, this was you know this was like a almost like a full length feature yeah. of of yeah. kind of Chris on that song, mm-hmm. you know, which was obviously something we had we had never done before. Talk about how you guys had to wrangle her and where where you went <laughs> and all that shit that day. Uh, oh yeah, so I mean, basically, I mean, just long story short, Justin Loudon. Uh, you know, he basically got us, uh, you know, in contact and, um, 
you know, definitely, I, I don't want to say convinced her to do it, but definitely really helped influence, uh, her, her doing that. Cause I don't think she does a lot of stuff like that. And, um, was you know, she, she familiar said, with harm's way? Um, I think she w- was familiar, but not like, didn't dive super into it, you know, until like, she's never had, been in the breeding grounds pit like me. No, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. But um, she will be soon. After that, she's going to be in the next pit for sure. For yeah. Sure. No, absolutely. Um, but what was cool is is uh, King Woman was playing Chicago, and she kind of hit me up maybe three hours before the show was going to start, and was like, "Hey, like I'm in in town. I can record the song if we can get someone to do it." And <laughs> I hit up Andy like on the fly and from said, Hey, are you free? Andy from Bricktop and, and Weekend Nachos. Yep. Of and uh and so uh basically she had Ubered to the studio and Nick met me there. Yeah, met up with them. And uh we kinda just explained to her how we wanted her to sing. And it was kind of crazy because like after everything was set up, I mean, she basically was gonna play in an hour and a half. Yeah. And so she, she had to knock it out pretty quickly and, and she did thankfully. And then Nick and I drove her back to the show. We <laughs> got her food. Yeah. We got, got sweet green and yeah, sweet fuck green. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> so she <laughs> ate and then performed within 45 minutes dude. after recording the, the vocal part. Dude, but she's a true what a pro. Mm-hmm. when it come, when it came to the, um, the music video, she's mm-hmm. a trooper. Yeah. I mean, she was like down. With I mean, whatever. I, I Cause that's the thing. I mean, it's when you're bringing someone obviously that you haven't worked with before, it's sometimes a toss up how it's going to go. But I mean, scary. Cr- yeah. But Chris is awesome. Was, uh, you know, obviously we can't thank her enough for, you know, being involved in the song. And then like the music video was even, you know, we thought was a further reach of if she would even do it. But, uh, but she was down and I think obviously it, it made the music video what it is yeah. for sure. So, it's very special to have the special guest be in the video, like actually features. That's like a thing that only really happens in major label, with major label budgets going on. Sure. How difficult was that logistically to make happen? It it honestly wasn't. I mean, it was kind of just like a conversation. I, I'm the one who's mainly in contact with her. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she was definitely just... I, it was basically, Hey, would you, would you be down to be involved in the music video? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, you know, and it was, you know, obviously Finn, I think also helped play a role in that because we, had, I showed her an example of, uh, a video that Finn had done prior to our music videos. And it, it was a style in which she liked and appreciated. And I think that kind of also helped make her more comfortable with the idea, um, because obviously like any artist, you know, she's, you know, wants, wants her to be represented yeah. in a, you know, the way that her art is going to be represented when she's on her own, not just with us. So I think of course. we were able to kind of match those things. So that's cool. Yeah. It really seems that way. It's like, it both feels like both of you in the coolest mm-hmm. way. Sure. In a way that like both your fan base would hear that and be like, I got to check her out. And maybe vice versa as well, mm-hmm. which is that's kind of the point of guest vocals, isn't it? Of course, of course, mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Just make it a big event so that both sides go, "Oh shit, I gotta check this out." Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was it like deciding to make that a single? Was an ambitious move. Being harm's way, being the running man, hardcore <laughs> band. <laughs> yeah. When you're listening to the album for the first time, say you're driving at night and you're like, "Oh, new harm's way is out." You get to that one, you're like, oh shit, they're experimenting. So I kind of, I personally envy everybody who didn't hear it as a single. Ah. Because so they got to have that holy fuck, like mid album <laughs> moment. But that mm-hmm. happened with, to me with Heaven's Call. We'll get gotcha. to that in a second. Because mm-hmm. the, that, that might be my favorite single minute on the album is the undertow into Heaven's Call. Mm. side a side b transition i i think you were particularly in favor of that being a single yeah yeah absolutely and you know i i i think that song it captures so many different elements of 
of the record from like the experimental components to the melodic components, um, to kind of like the ambition of the record, but also like, dude, like song has maybe one of the heaviest riffs on the record on it too, you know? Um, you know, it didn't, it didn't feel like, I guess, I don't know. It, it, it just felt right, you know, because again, how it captured every single element of the record. And, and, and I think just like the ethos of who we are as a band, which it's like, we're not the running man, you know, we are, <laughs> this is, this band is so yeah, much exactly. more, you yeah. know, this band is so much more than that. And anybody 100%. who is kind of interacted with our discography in a meaningful way kind of knows that. Right. And anyone who knows us as people knows that. Right. I think in general, harm's ways influences are more out of the box from what you actually sound like than they are things that you sound like. There's probably like five core bands yeah, that we all have sure. always liked since the beginning. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then all the, yeah, a bunch of random shit. And then you, you add in this fucking wizard and his, <laughs> his concubine up in, up in Milwaukee and, and you know, it, further uh complicates things in like is casey a, a, a his concubine cr- casey's his <laughs> concubine, sure. uh yo i've learned that. one thing <laughs> one one tidbit about undertow that i really like that also is like very harm's way is the drum part we were like we'll come up with something this is just like a filler kind of like temporary placement drum part mm-hmm. and then by the end of by the time it was time for tracking it was like I kind of like it. Yeah. 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 It was, no, yeah, it was, it was literally oh, us just being like, Hey, That's, you know, like, I love this, like fucking, you know, God flesh, like kind of drum loop that, that, that's, that's kind of sick, you know, maybe let's, let's just like put that in there for a placeholder now. And then like, I just like made it happen with real drums, you know? <laughs> and then and Casey then did just, like the production for it. Too. My bad to cut no, you off, but yeah. uh, Casey did like the production for it too. And all the synths and shit. And there's like, you can hear in the snare, there's like a trail mm-hmm. that's <laughs> cut in the middle by like the next snare placement, like cuts the trail of that snare or whatever. It's like a, like a hi-hat clamp almost on like the snare reverb. Um, cool. and all that shit kind of like made it feel way vibier and like yeah, totally no, for sure. Totally. There's like a lot of really cool, I think textures on that, on that song, um, that really like kind of make it what it is for sure. Yeah. That was a single, single worthy. Written in studio also mm-hmm. off, off really? the back of a different scrapped song. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we kind of just like used one component of a different idea we had and then just like wrote that in pre pro. And it's funny, man, that's the thing that you and Casey, I think really brought to us was the idea of like, you can cannibalize of your own material Mm-hmm. you can let go of these parts and make them work in better ways, which I think the three of us struggled with. No, I, I mean, you know, you, you have a part that you love and you just want, want to like hang on to it. Yeah. And, uh, you two and will were, are were just very good at being like, ah, oh, we can use, we'll find a place for that. Mm-hmm. We're going to use this better part for a more fitting part of this song or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, I mean, traditionally like, you know, in the early harm's way material, we just wrote full songs. And if, to, like a part didn't work we scrapped the whole song a yeah. lot of times wow so yeah um, sometimes there was there was no pre-production ever it was all right we wrote the song we go in the studio we play the song you know <laughs> like yeah. there was and if there you was don't like one of, part the song's gone <laughs> or or just like well the rest of the song is cool it's just that part yeah <laughs> yeah but there was no like kind of like um kind of thinking big picture, you know, with like, uh, like a collection of songs or like kind of critical thinking about parts, you know, or I shouldn't say there's none of that. Right. But like, we just weren't used to yeah. that methodology, if that makes sense, you yeah. know? And I think obviously working with, you know, working with, yeah, working with like Will Putney, you know, on post human and then Will Yip on, you know, common suffering, you know, we just got like more and more comfortable with that. And then obviously like, you know, Nick and Casey, you know, just, helped flesh that out even more in terms of like how we worked, worked through that as a collective. Mm. Mm. And I guess one funny tidbit as well is like vocally, I mean, on all of the records up until post human, I just went into the studio and, and sang without ever talking to anybody <laughs> about the cadences. <laughs> I would true. just, I would, and not even practicing the songs. Right. I mean, yeah. a lot yeah. of times I would just go and we would just sing the songs and there would be very little, you know, interaction. The the vocals were 
almost an afterthought. Yeah, I mean, it, with, it, with all due respect, it no, just wasn't. I, you know, the kind of music we were making wasn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. literally through, up until Rust, right. right? Like up until Rust, essentially. Yeah, you yeah. know. But I, I mean, I they don't think I they, could. They get what they get, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they get what they get. But I, I think I don't. I don't think I honestly don't think I could ever record a record now without pre-production. It, it was the, I mean, we got a taste of it with Putney. We did yeah. like, what, two three, days, three, three days? Three days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three Very, days. very little. With Yip, what did we do? Two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. And then probably wow. more. Dude, two, then, two weeks where we would like work on a song or two every day and then demo it. And then he would send us, he would send us the demos by the time we were in the van going back to the hotel. That's unbelievable. Like we would listen to them immediately and just kind of like talk about, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. yeah it was and, great. And I mean, even like before we started session two, I think. Like, oh, yeah. like two, there was like two, three days of like additional pre-production because, you know, we, we had, we had went home and just like kind of sat with those songs and like, you know, Nick, I think, you know, you can hyper fixate on things and the album art is, is a brain <laughs> and it's, it's my fucking anxiety yeah. and that's what the album art is. Uh, but yeah, at home we're, we're picking apart the songs and shit. And then like for session two, uh, Bo and Casey and I got to the studio uh, maybe two days before Chris and James were able to show up for tracking. So like <laughs> we, we drove the van. Casey brought his like desktop computer. Yeah. Full <laughs> like, PC. On it. like his, like his like <laughs> RGB, like <laughs> gaming rig. And, uh, and we, we like set it up in the control room and we're like pre proing again. Uh, oh, we, wow. we like program shit and, and we're like trying new ideas for songs that we thought were done from pre pro, but then we're like, splicing that shit with kind of the demos and like dude i feel bad because like chris showed up at the studio and then we're like what do you think about these drum parts like for for this part or like this part for for like new sections that were added to the song that he didn't even like ever hear yet yeah Yeah, you know and and i just spent like six weeks you know or however long just learning the songs that i thought i was gonna play you know and you know but you know to be fair like everything was better you know well that's the thing if it if it if the if it's serving the greater good of the song or the record, it's like you gotta drop. Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, you gotta drop any kind of preconceived shit. And yeah, just go with it. Yeah, I mean, like honestly, like yeah, I mean, without those first couple days, you know, it, it's hard. You know, I think the breakdown of your favorite song, Heaven's Call, like wouldn't have been there, right? I think yeah, that, cyanide that was, really, was different in, in that cyanide. You know, cyanide yeah, cyanide wouldn't well. have been cyanide. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, there was, was there was. Uh, I mean, it was definitely like much needed. And to Bo's point, like just helped the overall record, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, before I forget the, the last thing I wanted to say about undertow that I think is cool is, uh, I feel like harm's way obviously is known for like the God flesh influence and, and all that stuff. And I feel like a lot of that is because of like the presence of like electronics and a lot of the songs mm-hmm. or some of like the riffing styles of like having like a, like a repetitive, like repetitive kind of chromatic phrase or whatever. But I feel like undertow is the first time that, uh, we've kind of like used the melodic like Godflesh stuff as like an influence mm-hmm. a little bit because mm-hmm. that, that was like a big thing I was kind of shooting for with like kind of the, the chord voicings and like the clean parts and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and the way that those like layered. Mm-hmm. So it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Kicks ass. Great point. Heaven's call <laughs> track six. This is your track? You pitting? Fucking banger. Banger, dude. I'm pit. I'm in the pit every night. <laughs> <laughs> this, I remember, Nick, I don't remember necessarily when you brought it to practice, but I remember like watching what you were doing and watching the riff and being like, okay. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> like, oh no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, this was a riff too that was demoed in Milwaukee, you know, because mm. we, we played this for Mm-hmm. a while you know oh the, the um, chorus right yeah, the chorus like, yeah. and i mean even even the intro and, the, and kind of the mm-hmm. the chug part yeah mm-hmm. it was different but mm-hmm. we had the other thing again like yeah there was there was kind of frankenstein stuff in there mm-hmm. from yeah. from you know that ended up just kind of working um but yeah biggest pit on the record is you think so 100 percent. yeah i've i've heard from many <laughs> have you that, yeah, I've heard I've heard from many, you know. I think Cyanide has it. Many whom I respect, you know, in terms of their uh, pit um 
pit prowess. Ar- artic- yeah, exactly. <laughs> pit prowess. You know, they uh, they they know a thing or two about pitting and and writing pit riffs. Um, Let me tell that, you, yeah. I got a pit HD, and I think this is the hardest part on the record. Dude, 100%. pit HD, like the ending of the song. Is that the part yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, yeah the big of course. End. I think and it's kind of pit to pit. It is. It is kind of pit to pit. Pardon this interruption. We've got to take a break for a second. I'm just so thirsty. What do you got? Oh, my goodness. That could not be the foundational nutrition beverage, AG1. It sure is. It's my foundational nutritional supplement, Bo. And uh, let me tell you, my gut health was in shambles. <laughs> Lord my, knows. I, I was lacking in every vitamin in the world. Mm. Life was hard. AG1 made me harder. <laughs> so uh, we've got a AG1 spot or the g- gracious, gorgeous sponsor of this, of this week's episode. Mm. And let me tell you, man, so many people message me and go, tell me about AG1. Is it really that good? Is it, like, is it actually it? worth it? And I'm like, yeah, dude. If they <laughs> if they tomorrow stopped sponsoring the show, I'd be a customer for life. Yeah, you know what? That's actually a really good selling point. I think I would too. I've just grown so accustomed to taking it. I take it every day. I don't take my multivitamin. It's got everything. Dude, we I need. don't need a multivitamin. This nope. this as part of this is like my pre coffee morning ritual now. Yes, exactly. Only on ad days do I not take it in the morning, and it's <laughs> just to prove a point that I've had a terrible day up until now. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely now, um, but everybody I know that has 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 taken the pledge and and uh, purchased AG One, mm-hmm. they they never look back. Chris it's Mills future- takes it. My mom takes it. See, <laughs> the big two. <laughs> Athleticgreens.com slash hard lore. You get five free travel packs. You're going to be traveling. You're going to FYA. You're going to tie down. You're going to one of these things. Five of these bad boys right here. Look how thin that you're, is. You're going to need them. See, look at that. That can fit. That fits in my back pocket. I got one in my back pocket right now. I'm not going to show you because then I'd have to get up, and I don't have to. And you also get a uh, free bottle of the uh, what is it? Vitamin D and D. K. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's and you're miss. I guarantee you that you, the listener, are missing that. So you should get on it right now. Right now. It's also Manscaped time. <laughs> wow. You know, when is it not Manscaped time, really? I mean, every single it's Manscaped day, week, month, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I got, we got, I just happened to keep this, the body wash yeah, yeah. right here next to my couch. Foot duster, Dude. the smell, the scent that the foot, it's the scent is refined, which is also, I think, some of the other, yeah, it's the, the body wash, a delight. It's you so, know, you can rest assured if you have this stuff, if you got the reviver. That you don't even need cologne. If you run out of cologne, you can just spray some ball spray on your face and hands. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll smell so good. People will be like, dude. What is that? What is that? And I'll be like, it's supposed to be my balls, but it's my whole body. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Code hard lore, 20% off for shipping. We love Manscaped. We 20% love it. We off and free shipping it. is the craziest to me. Why wouldn't you do it? Yeah, it's really 20%. I, again, there ain't nothing that 20% off would stop me from buying. You know, like if I see a 20% off coupon for anything, yeah, the trigger's being pulled. And it's also what not time. And it's especially important this week as it's set in stone. It's happening. We just, we just figured it out. We just figured it out Saturday, October 21st, Ugh. 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. That's it. Bo and I for the pit. This is a bit the pit benefit whatnot stream. Yeah. We got I got heat, man. Yeah, he pulled out some big guns. I <laughs> flew with a bunch of stuff, so I didn't want to like I couldn't bring that much. No. He's got some big he's got some guns coming. I got some stuff. And then Taylor, of course, like mm. I pulled some stuff from his like yard sale thing just to be like, no, no, this needs to be. This is special. So smart. he didn't know what he had. You know what he's got. The watcher wants what he's got, and you're going to get it. So you join us on Whatnot. You click the link in the description. You get 15 bucks off your first purchase. And for those of you who don't know, Whatnot is basically eBay meets like Twitch and yeah. meets Hardlore. So we're yeah. live. We're talking. We're chatting. We're talking with people in the chat who are also bidding on items when they go up. 
And it only happens one time. It's not recorded. It's a live thing. When you miss it, you miss it. It's like a, a little live episode where you can buy things. That's right. What's better than buying things? L- literally nothing on earth. Literally my number one hobby. Dude, this seat could not be more uncomfortable. I'm sorry. Do you? I have benches in the kitchen. Okay, stand, stand up. up. Yeah, you can stand up. <laughs> it's going to look really awkward. <laughs> yeah, James going to stand because he's uncomfortable. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're still in frame. It's good. <laughs> it looks like we're. <laughs> it looks like we're just in trouble. <laughs> it's so That's awesome. Up. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you want to switch with me? Oh, I got a chair coming good. tomorrow. That'll be so much better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna stand. I'm, I'm gonna stand for like one minute. You're fine. You're fine. Were Never you about to stand. ask me about cyanide, Bo? I was just saying. While Heaven's Call, I think does have a very heavy pit part. I think when. It when cyanide after the full time part finally opens up, that's what that for me is the. So here's my here's my here's my point to that. Yes, sir. Side B of this record is unbelievable. One through five is like classic harm's way. You know, it's like mm. you guys are you're you're that that's the appetizer, and then the real motherfuckers six through ten is where you go. With fucking hands, with bitch, <laughs> and like that. This is this. There's like a. This is like two journeys. One through five, you got a whole record. Basically, it's like a an, an opener, a follow up, uh, a weird, a hard song with some allusions to the weirdness. A hard song, and then big finish, and then like the second story begins with Heaven's Call. T- tell me about writing Cyanide. Yeah, how did you fucking do that? How did you okay. do? So, <laughs> so uh, cyanide and a B side on the record used to like share some parts in common. We had two songs written with like a couple like really similar things going on in both. Um, we did record the B side, obviously, and and it ended up being like very different from cyanide, but. But it was kind of two different ideas based on the same thing. And uh, that one changed a lot. Like in pre-pro, we kind of like structured it more like a like a whole song or whatever. But uh, when we went home from pre-pro, I kind of thought the transitions were just like really shitty. And that that was like one of the things that like when we got back to doing tracking, uh, like that's that's one of the things we worked on. And, and that was like one of the. Chris surprises where we had to be like, what do you think of this part? Um, <laughs> but, but like, luckily I think everyone thought this was like way better. Um, even <laughs> dude, Will was like a trooper about my like annoying fucking like last minute changes. Cause like, I feel like I can picture like his reaction now when we got there for <laughs> tracking and I told him that I like wanted to change like this or that part. We call that the next day test. We have this thing uh-huh. called the next day test where you write a thing, yeah. you, re- you record it. If it's still good the next day, it's, good, it's ready to go. Yeah. Hmm. I, Most times it isn't. You, yeah. you record something, you go, holy shit, that's what we fucking did. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I just, I also have like a fucking next two days test and like a next week test <laughs> and then like next and a, month test. So, and, dude, a, and, a, and a post release test. Yeah, post post release <laughs> test. Yeah. 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 That's uh, the best one. How's, how's mean, the post release, the release test dude, treating you? I, I can answer that. You came, to, you were at practice the other day and you're like, yo, we were listening to some of the demos. I like some of the performances better. No, 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 no. <laughs> not not as generally as that. I was saying there there was something about vocally the demo version of Wanderer that I liked more. But as a song, I like how it turned out. Good. So I'm, are I'm you talking about the stuff that you you guys are doing on there or the yeah James yeah yeah. No, not not James stuff. It was it was mostly Definitely like the main me. take. But yeah, that's right. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm very uh, present on that one. I feel like so. Yeah. I'm, I'm maybe just like more critical of like how that how that turned out. You know, he was he was sick. He was a little yeah. sick, yeah. a little stuffly. And you yeah. think you can hear that? Well, yeah, a little compared to the demo, at least. But like, okay. I, I guess no one else is comparing no, it. So. I, I never didn't catch my ear. Nobody will ever hear it. Yeah, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Terrorizer, the big. Dude, epic industrial banger, dude. I I feel like this was this was Casey's like mission. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he he had done the gift and it kind of got overlooked. Mm-hmm. He's he's very good at what he does. It's actually really crazy, right. and I think you know he wanted to really like 
not the gift part two, but just be like, all right, how's this, you know, and, and mm. like just kind of bring something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Big old fingers. And this song and, is two big fingers up to me. Yeah. I love it. I love Yeah, me too. Good. So you playing it, I'm glad you're playing it so that people go, what the fuck was that one? Because mm-hmm. then I hope this episode makes people go, damn, I got to really fixate on that one. And heaven's gone. Mm-hmm. But that's <laughs> putting a song, a song this good being track eight means the record must fucking rock. You know, mm-hmm. there's, 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 there's gifts, no pun intended, hidden throughout the entire <laughs> thing. Yeah, that was, that was a tough one to place. I feel like we, we didn't yeah. know like where to put it. Cause it kind of happened again. Mm-hmm. Kind yeah. of. Mm-hmm. Well, those are just tough because you don't know. You don't want to put them too early. If you if you make this song track two, then people might get a totally different Uh opinion or taste of what they think the record's going to be. It's a tricky. They're hard. It's tricky. What's funny is before this conversation, I was like, "Damn, the sequence of this is crazy." And Mm. now talking to it, I'm like, "This is the only way this thing could have been sequenced." Yeah. In hindsight, I'm I'm really happy with the sequencing that we chose. Absolutely. Absolutely. Me um, too. The part where Terrorizer goes into the full time thing and you get the you get the chorus. That that it's one of my favorite moments on the record, I think. Where it just like like we a, a lot on this record, you'll eventually get to the part, you know, but there's a lot of like you gotta get there. You gotta earn it, you know, as like the listener Which, or whatever dude, on this record. That's my favorite music. Yeah, right, exactly. I, I and love I, earning it guys and and i think because of the 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 drum beat of the second verse i guess is the do 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 got do 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 like you you hit a snare where the full time part is but it's mm-hmm. not a full time part yet you're still like doing the tom mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. you get this little taste of what's coming well and once mm-hmm. it gets there too yeah i mean i remember when i went to casey's house to work on shit and then he had the idea for terrorizer and i was just like oh this is crazy cuz like the main riff, like the verse and shit, like he like pretty much entirely made it, like wrote the riff and all the production and stuff was, I mean, I think that was used in the actual song. Yeah. And what we did in the studio was like layer the real drums like over it and add layers to it. But like Casey's like initial project for that song is like in the track. But then, uh, but it was, it was like the only part he had at the time. And then like the chorus, like I mean, I like didn't write that. I just I helped him come up with it by just adding a stop. It's like the same riff with like a chunk cut out. So that's like yeah. why there's like the stop and the riff. And then we added the bridge and like that was like the like the demo version of that mm-hmm. is the structure we ended up going with like in the song too. Mm-hmm. That's rare. Uh, kind yeah. of. Didn't we cut one thing? We cut so, one of the choruses. So in pre pro, the melodic part that happens later in the song. Yeah, we had that earlier in the song as well yeah. we added that in pre-pro but then after that oh we went i see, back to I, the see OG I see and we took that yeah the extra gotcha. one out yeah that's one of my f- favorite things about the yep. the uh the the song too is is kind of like the synthy kind of oh. like Whee! bridge yeah yeah, it's so oh, yeah. Um, yeah dude, what's going on the, the snare drills? on the pit does it have like a big reverb tail or something i think you it's it's about? like a, a hyper compressed snare Fucking yeah, badass. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. like you know, to like kind of what Nick was saying, it, it there's there's a mix of like natural drums on there, um, and then a couple samples too, you know, that that, that kind of make make them sound as as crazy as they are, yeah, and then like f- you know, f- forty plus bass tracks too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he, yeah, there's like there's like. T- there's like two, it's like two parallel bass tracks. Yeah. Like and then the guitar song. playing with the, the drop tuner thing on it too, with the pitch shifter. Yeah, there's like, there is guitar on it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how you decide to do it, because I'm not sure if, I don't know. I don't, I don't, that's like the thing. It's like, I'm not trying to split it up. Yeah, so if you're listening to this and you've seen us play it, uh, tell us how you liked it. <laughs> because <laughs> by the time this episode comes out, we played a couple shows. Like, subscribe, share, yeah. drop in the comments below. Yeah. Yeah. Drop yeah. in the comments <laughs> below. Yeah. He's yeah, a natural, this guy. Yeah. Uh, have you guys? Have you guys been? Are you still f- tweaking this song at practice, or is that? Is it? Are you yeah, almost it, done? They got together when I was out by you, okay. and, and worked on stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna be in the lab quite a bit yeah. <laughs> before I think, I think we leave. The bass and the drums is glued basically, and like the rest of the. 
like figuring out what what Bo and I should do during this song mm-hmm. instead of just standing there and waiting to go down there and there. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> uh, that's the hard part. We might take a little you could break. Just drop, dude, drop and do extra bass. We could. It could drop be crazy. Real that, fucking low. That that was <laughs> attempted, and we will see how that sounds in a in, know, in a real room. In a in a practice space with nothing mic'd up, it it was not great. Mm. Okay, but, you just need bodies, dude. Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. Dude, dude. Sound totally changes once we get some bodies. Just wait until you get bodies. It's all. It'll be fine. <laughs> Sadist guilt, which was a working title for the record. It was ah ah. Who's the sadist? I forgot about that. It's James, dude. Yeah, look no. at, oh, look at him. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> tell, tell me about this once. <laughs> the, the song used to be connected to uh, to denial, like it was like a like one song into another. So like the yeah, kind of. Right. The like little Matthew breakdown at the end of Denial. It's like it does two key changes at the end of that song, and then uh, it's in the key that Denial or that Sadist Guild is in. So ah. there was no intro written for it. It went straight from that like pitch shifty Matthew thing into straight into the verse of Sadist Guild, and it was like a mega song. Uh, and then the breakdown of Sadist Guild was also that same part again. Right. Uh, Fuck. That's oh right. man. Mm-hmm. Which that's my I shit. thought. I thought it was really cool, and so did Casey, and we were, like, kind of married to the idea of that, but then Will was basically like, uh, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Will, Will definitely didn't to, fuck with it. Yeah, he, he didn't fuck with it for sure, but uh, I don't know. I feel like at first we weren't sure if we, like, agreed or not, but, like, I think after splitting him up and, like, making all the changes to him. I, I feel like I agree. It was a better idea to like break them apart. But. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Something that's important to point out that we literally never did until Nick joined the band and started writing was a lot of these songs are in, like they start in the key of C sharp. Uh, some of them are in C and some in, are in C sharp on because, here. Yeah. Like instead of starting open, which like when you, when you go back to talking about how James would come with the single finger riff, the, Nine times out of ten, he would be like, yo, I got this riff. And he would start <laughs> on an open. <laughs> Just because of the nature of writing heavy riffs. Nick yeah. starts writing on for layman's like myself on the second fret so that you can go down. And let me tell you something. <laughs> I love A going down like that. Yeah. And then you guys are in drop, but hitting yeah. the six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. With the negative one, the real, mm. uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's the shit, dude. It's smart, Nick, because I, I a lot of the time you'll be stuck. You'll be like, "What do I do with this song?" Yeah, yeah. And then you do it two notes higher, so you can do something there, and it's done. yeah. You just got to play on on the second fret where it's like, uh, it's like the key you play in if you're in like a like a butt rock band that's in drop tuning. Yeah. Because then you can do like the two o two thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Oh, um, two o two is just, crazy. They, they just write your normal <laughs> shit like that, and then it only the real riffers know, like Nick. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And ain't nobody doing two o two right now, dude. Say this guilt is you have to put something like, for lack of a better word, big and hard before the the closer. Yeah, because uh-huh. it's like because the epic closer is that's the last. That's how you sum up everything. The song before it is almost more important because it's like, hey, this is this is who we are, and then we're going to step out of our comfort zone for this big last one. But this is the last chance to kind of remind you yeah, that fucking that's good. the thing we do better than everybody else. It's a good way but to put it. But Wanderer is maybe the best harm's way closer, period. It's funny. I, I, I feel like it... Them, thematically, maybe peripherally, I don't really know. It has similarities to Dead Space. Uh, I don't key wise. I feel, but it's, not it's not even like musically. Just in like like mm. the spirit of what the song is, because that was kind of like an ambitious closer. Mm-hmm. I would say, Dead Space, big song. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a big song. You yeah, know? it's got a it's got a big a big intro, you know what I mean? Um, and I think Wanderer does too, but, uh, with a different vibe. I think I truly like 
after having heard the record a billion times and then like when we're getting ready for this, listening to it, I, I've been listening to it like every day, you know, to get ready for tour. Uh-huh. The ending of Wanderer is like, like I love the melodies. I love Washed Out James. I love the weird little, like mm-hmm. the weird guitar shit you do. Um, when it goes into the like the very ending mm-hmm. is one of the heavier things I think as a band we've ever put out. And I'm like, good, I'm, I'm good job, Nick. So mm-hmm. so happy with that part. And That's one it. thing about this song, <laughs> That's mm-hmm. fucker. I, I want to clear the air because I've seen a lot of people say that it's uh, me singing on that song, but it's it's a combination of of Nick and Bo. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, wow. so so it's not me. It's not my beautiful voice on there. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I can't I can't get to the. I don't. You know, I only have the. The famous growl. You do you know? think you think we could do that live? Yeah, I, I feel like it sounds really like you can hear like who is who like on the track and everything. I feel like it would be similar. We would just need like Bo, he, real. Bo good. had to point it out for me, but now I can't unhear. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like so like distinctly like Bo. I think his his like register in the part. It's, it's his cool. is yeah his yeah, but it was like I just didn't couldn't tell. I don't know you like that yet, Nick. <laughs> you know, I'm not. <laughs> you never sang to me personally, yeah. so I wasn't. Wasn't prepared. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. true. I really like that song. I think that song is like ambient and cool and just like, I don't know, makes me think of sand and <laughs> desert. I, I see that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So here's something about, about Dead Space and uh and Wanderer that I only know this because of Casey, because he's like kind of like a theory yeah. dude. And I I don't really know anything about that, but like Dead Space in the before the chorus, the pre chorus is like kind of melodic. And both Wanderer and Dead Space have like Phrygian and like harmonic minor shit in it. They're not in the same key, but that's why they have the they got the mm. desert vibe because the uh, desert vibe. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay, okay, I got you. I it got is you. in both songs for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got that. Vibe. It's very, very Dune. Yeah, very I, Dune. I mean, I actually, I think that turned out to be one of my favorite same songs on the record actually because it's almost like. Converge neurosis, very you know, neurosis. Like, I can see that. Yeah, it's like when and Converge does the the neurosis songs on the album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where they go, hey, yeah. this is the neurosis one on this one. <laughs> which, which, like, I like that you, in the age of nobody making it to closers, kept the closer epic. Like this sounds like you wrote it. Like this is the last song. I don't. I don't know if it was ever specifically written that way, but I feel like as soon as way. we, as soon as we got the like unmix on master shit, it was like, wow. Mm-hmm. In my mind, at least I felt like it had to be the closest, especially the melodic guitar part. Like, yeah. like that to me just felt like that would be the conclusion of yeah. like something, you know, whether it was a side or whether it was the record, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite songs on the record. And it's funny too, because like you look at, if you look at, I don't think you can really see it on normal Spotify, but on like the artist Spotify, I can look at a release, right? And see which songs are like the most popular. Dead Space is not last, oh. which is, which is like, oh, okay. You know, that's huge. Honestly, it might be third to last, but that's just kind of like de facto, of course. Yeah. But and still, the, I mean, what, all of our last songs are like in a row on the bottom. And we realized this the other day at practice <laughs> when we were making the set list for this is like all of our most popular songs are openers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the first song off every record is kind of the 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 banger for that record. But that's what they are. That's why they're that for a reason. You know, they're Absolutely. opening the record because they could open the set. Absolutely. Silent Wolf is another one of those. Like you could easily open the set with that. We might do that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's common suffering. Um, I'm proud of you guys. We haven't, I, I wanted to wait to talk about it until this, but I think you guys have done an incredible job. I think I don't want to play favorites here, but you know, this one's up there in terms of mm. the harm's way discography to me. I think it is like cohesively start to finish probably the easiest one to just blow straight through. Oh. 
You know? Yeah. Like putting putting this on at the gym, I'm probably going to listen to it twice and then I'm going to go home. Hmm. Whereas wow. pretty much any other band, I'm not going to finish the album. I'm going to skip around. Let's do some let's do some standard hard lore stuff. Let's get into it cuz we haven't this is Chris's first time. We it's talk about time. him damn near once a week here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Chris, 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 tell me about growing up with Bo. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. It, 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 it's crazy. Um, Do you got to tell the one story? <laughs> Dude, no, but it's crazy because I've actually had this, like, uh, this conversation with a couple people over the last few weeks about, like, just about, like, Harm's Way and the members of the band. And, like, obviously, like these two guys are like two of like my oldest friends, you know, like in, you know, in, in, in many ways, but Bo is like, shit, I've known this dude since I was 12, 12, yeah. you know, <laughs> like 12, 13, you know? And, uh, you know, we definitely started as like mortal enemies. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> Did <laughs> you? You, mean you gotta tell. I've never, I've never told the story. It's a great story. <laughs> You know, like kind of definitely, I mean, wh which one? Like where do we okay. start? You know? So Chris and I <laughs> grew up in a town called Roselle, Illinois. Um, Roselle's like, just like a nice suburb. Behind where I lived and like behind the street, there's this huge, like it's, I say huge, but I bet in, it, that's just my memory. There's a pond, just like a pond on the way that we would walk past to go to the grade school or to like skateboard <laughs> at the grade school, basically. And I was friends with this one dude. Oh, should I say his name? It don't matter, right? His last his last name was Men, uh, Menzara, <laughs> and he was good a good friend of mine. Um, Chris is a year older than me, so like fifth grade, and then he was in sixth grade. You know, Chris is at another school. Big and jump. So so we yeah, and we hadn't we had yeah, I was a big middle school. We hadn't you know? interfaced yet at all. Big time. Um, we had a couple of friends in common, but basically one day, me and uh, another a mutual friend of mine and Chris's eventually, and then this Manzara guy were walking past, and across the pond is is this Chris's house, Chris Mills' house. So his back yeah. patio faces the pond, which then faces the path. <laughs> Manzara, for some reason, moons Chris's house because they had a beef over something. So he like bends over, full on moons Chris's house, and we're just like ha, ah, and like keep walking. Five seconds later. Chris Mills is running into his yard and <laughs> screaming at us from across this pond saying like, just being like, Hey motherfucker, I'm going to fucking kill you. Just like, you know, I don't, you know, dude, aggro my, Chris, very my, aggro. Chris. My parents were not home wow. or else I would have got my ass beat for speaking and saying the things I said. <laughs> dude. dude, you never moon a man at his home. No, 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 no. That's and, sacred, and I remember that's a sacred bond. There was like a like a dance or something coming up, and he was like, "Oh shit, he might be there." <laughs> Chris Mill and what's funny is like, Chris and I are, are pretty much the same height. Chris Manzara, this other guy, was like six foot. He was fucking huge, <laughs> fucking giant. He was a massive man, and it would like like honestly, like yes, you know, no fear. But dude. Chris, no fear, no fear in this guy. I remember, remember on the way back from Burger King one time, you and Brad, we, Chris and I, our first band was called Double Cross. Chris played drums. I played guitar. This guy, Brad, played bass in Double Cross. And there used to be a Burger King right by my house. We would go to the Burger King and then walk to my garage and play and practice. You and Brad got into like a fist fight, but you like <laughs> stopped it. Like, like and, and this is, wait, this is a pattern because Caution didn't bring up this story. And I've been waiting. You and Brad like got into a fight and you just like held Brad down. And Brad was kind of bigger than both you and I too. He was lanky, but he was bigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was a little and bigger. And you were like, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> and he did. Are you Italian, and everything Chris? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Am I Italian? Bet, you bet your <laughs> fucking ass he is. <laughs> As Chris likes to say, mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Chris likes to say. Hey, uh, wait, what about it? What about the other story? Hold on. Yeah, I'll Oh, the, the men's are God story. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there's that. And I also drew on your Blink-182 poster oh, or dude, cardboard yeah. cutout. Dude, my, dude, mom's gonna, <laughs> my mom's going to be so upset when she hears this. Everybody All right, so yeah. Tower Records used to have display, like huge foam board displays of like album art and shit. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, and four. yeah, so my mom, I was a huge Blink-182 fan in eighth grade. 
Yeah, probably seventh grade, eighth grade. I think yeah, seventh eighth around then. And um, we were friends by that time, and we were friends with another dude who I got this apartment with. It just ties in. And um, my mom had got me a take off your pants and jacket, like foam thing. It was huge. It was like four foot tall, six foot wide. Like it covered the whole head of my bed. And I just had it in my room. And like, to be honest, I was a little over blink at that point. I was starting to get into punk because we were hanging out. But that's you know, sentimental. Yeah, yeah. It's from your, it's from Wendy. Ex- ex- you know? Exactly. It's from Wendy. And uh, what you write on it when I was in the bathroom, Chris? I, th- I think I wrote Bo loves Tom on it. He really did. <laughs> Just in like dude, I, that big a space, like yeah, literally dude, got him. I could have. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> hey, there's hey, there's one thing that people need to know is that Chris is a bully. He, he doesn't appear mm. to be one, but he's he's yeah. he's really a bully. But you know what's fun? So like another another thing that I didn't bring up with caution here, because I think it's funnier if you're here. Yeah. Is one time at a harm's way practice when caution was still in the band. Band. <laughs> the band. <laughs> still in the, the band. <laughs> um. <laughs> um Fuck, I don't remember what the argument was over, but Chris said something along the lines of like, I don't know what you're doing. You're acting like an idiot right now. Yeah. And John said, did you just call me an idiot? And Chris went, yes. And John, <laughs> with his bass on, leapt over the hi-hat into Chris and tried to like fight him with his. So the bass is going. <laughs> and like making noise. Yeah. And. And again, to Chris's credit, he like kind of just like, of course he did because of John had a base and like couldn't get around, grabbed like John in a headlock and literally went, John, we're friends, we're friends. And just like <laughs> stopped the fight. And we all laughed about it. Like, I remember you and I had to turn around because we were laughing so hard about Dude, it. Dude, all three of you turned around because I remember like once I let him go, like John finally chilled out and he was like, okay, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I turned around and everyone's just like backs turned to us and I just, I could just like see John Hofacker's body like visually shaking, holding in a laugh, you know? <laughs> it was so fucking good. I mean, instead of, you know, breaking up our friends fighting, we just laughed instead. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's Classic. sounds about right. But yeah, Chris, Chris and I would, we would, he had a drum set in his uh, garage. Parents, yeah. My parents' garage. I would learn AFI songs and we would play AFI songs. Yeah. Was yeah. Pretty much I how mean, it started. Yeah. Like Bo and that's I, how, that's Bo and how I I mean, it, you, you could say in, it's in the first so many, domino. Yeah, in so <laughs> many ways. Like, I mean, like we were both in middle school. I was in eighth grade. You were in seventh grade, and you know, Bo was playing in a band that was like they were just doing like kind of like pop punk covers and stuff. And like, oh yeah, you needed a drummer. And like, you know, oh yeah, this is like young Chris at this point. Like nobody else I know likes punk, <laughs> you know. So I'm just like craving friends, craving people to like put, you know, you know, just yeah, to like play music with. And you know, I think I eventually joined. Kick me, kick me. Yeah, it was, it was a lot that of what blink. It was, called? it was called kick me. It's called kick me, dude. It's a lot of man. blink. It was a lot of blink. Uh, I think we we did. I think we did MXPX and or, or blink. Uh, dude, we did fucking lit. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we kids did that today well. don't know how hard the kick me sign on the back used to go. Oh, dude, forget it. <laughs> you get your ass kicked all fucking day. Like, what's <laughs> going on? But then, but then it was like AFI, yeah, Rise yeah. Against, or like the first Rise Against record was big. Yeah, AF, you know, I mean, after that, like, yeah, like we all just started hanging out, and you know, I, I think I, I mean, I kind of introduced you guys to like other stuff. You, like, you, uh, by way of AFI, it yeah. was like Misfits, Minor Threat, yeah, and then it was like the floodgates open, yeah. like American Nightmare, like a lot of that shit at the time. Yeah, I talk about you often because you're my old head. You, yeah, you, you were my. I didn't have an older brother. Chris was my yeah. older brother and that's how yeah. I got into music. And then like all the, the first shows I went to were with Chris. My grandma bought us tickets to see American nothing at the Metro that we're now have a sold out headliner at and near the end of the next month, <laughs> which is fucking dope. Uh, you know, we went to the fireside together. My dad dropped us off. That's when I asked Jared Alexander if he was related to Jason Alexander and then asked to use his cell phone to call my dad. Yeah. Also an American, <laughs> yeah. Also an American Nightmare show. <laughs> also an American Nightmare show um, that nope. James was at, and then the first time we met James or even saw James, yeah, was t- together. And then the first time we hung out with James was at your house on your birthday. Yeah, like a little while later. Yeah, it was my 18th. What, what did you think of James when you saw him, dude? Dude, I mean that that's actually really <laughs> funny because John introduced us to James. You know, we ended up we ended up going to see. 
stand and fight and down to nothing at uh at the Darien, Darien Sportsplex. Yeah. And you know, John was fucking awesome at that time because not he, now. <laughs> well, John John's incredible. You, can't not. you, know, you can't not. We're friends. We're friends, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like at that time, like you know, I started talking with John over like the Chicago hardcore, like message board. And then like over AOL instant messenger and mm-hmm. stuff. And John's like, yo, come to this show, you know? So me, you, and a couple of our friends, you know, kind of drove out and John was just like this, like liaison, you know, in, in a lot of ways and introduced us to so many people. And actually like James was at that show and John introduced us to James and he's like, oh yeah, we call, this is youth crew James. We also call him little wrench. <laughs> and like, you know, he definitely looked like the singer of uh, 10 yard fight who was, you know, performing that mm-hmm. night with <laughs> fucking stand and fight, you know, but, um, you were wearing was a, crazy. a gray war zone, war zone yeah. shirt. I, there's and, a picture. Didn't you send a picture pants, to me yeah, recently? Uh, tan, like cargo shorts or whatever. Like I remember it vividly. How jacked were you already, James? It jacked. He was jacked. It wasn't, wasn't like you, you were starting to really go. Yeah. I mean, jacked. <laughs> I was 19 at the time. Yeah. Right. So. Full it, full it. Great, great uh, era of hardcore, though. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, incredible. It was. Yeah. Well, bam, damn. So, in That's terms it. of touring, in harm's way, who's the fucker? Who's the absolute? Who's the little fucker? But you just go, come on, man. I know it's I mean, Chris. I told you. Co- so, I so mean, just tell me it's Chris. I mean, you're. I mean, define little fucker. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, you little fucker. I'll, you know I'll define exactly it. what I mean. I'll define it. Okay, who's always the last in a van? Chris. Who goes and grabs something when we're about to leave? Chris. Okay. <laughs> I mean, no, who's the be- always, dude, the who be- always the, the best longest move. shower? No, Chris. The, the best move is stopping for gas, all of us getting back to the van. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And he, <laughs> stayed, <laughs> he stayed sleeping. He's like, oh, I got to get something to eat. <laughs> dude, <laughs> that's classic. Dude, that's one, classic. one time we were like legitimately late for a show and Chris was hungry. <laughs> and instead of like just getting a snack, he went to the Denny's and ordered a to-go platter. Denny's? To, to eat Denny's. Dude, so that's we had to wait minutes, for 20 <laughs> 20, 30 minutes for this guy to eat eggs and some toast. <laughs> Let's see. Who's who's the easiest? The easiest on tour is you and Casey, for sure. Yeah. I you mean, two are, yeah. are pretty go with the flow. Yeah. We've moved into a, a new model where we have to get separate rooms because me, James, and Casey snore. James actually does less. I'm suddenly the worst snorer in the world. Casey's bad, too. Casey's bad, too. But we also like the room really cold. These guys just happen to like it a little warmer. So it actually works Warm out boys. and they don't, it, they don't snore. Mm-hmm. So it actually works out and you get your own fucking bed. Mm-hmm. And, Chris, you, know, you were, you, you were famous for being frigid on that tour we dude, did together. Dude, fucking frigid, man. I was What's not an, ox, an icebox dude, I, boy. <laughs> Put some layers on. He does. Oh, I Lord do. knows he does. Trust I, me. I think more. the thing too, like, you know, me and Chris or me and Bo sometimes butt heads. Cause it's like, we're basically like brothers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like no matter what, like I feel like at some point in tour, I mean, you obviously you know with Taylor, right? Like you just get to a point where like you've been around each other so much, like you're bound to butt butt heads. But it's it's never been to a like a real bad point. No, ever. we've never laid hands on each no, other. No, no. You and I almost did in can- mm-hmm. on Cannibal Corpse, but but it's never. It's always like. I got to get out of here. I just got to, you know, because like we're it, fucking adults. And it's over something yeah. dumb too. Yeah, always. No, totally. I mean, like you, you kind of hit a breaking point, you know, and like luckily or not even a breaking point, but like, you know, like you kind of reach a limit. And mm. I mean, like luckily, like everyone is calm enough and cool headed enough to like, I think, catch themselves when they're being ridiculous, Um, you know. What was it going to end? Plus 2018, dude, we toured for like eight months out of I the know. year. That was, that was a Too crazy much. year. It, it, it was, I, it was a lot. <laughs> ask and more you're about of these, to maybe do that again right now. Maybe yeah. ask, ask more of these. Who's the blank on tour. Cause that's a really funny. <laughs> who's the <Nick>. stinky guy? <laughs> Nick, am the, I, am the I stinky guy? Am I, am, am I the fucker, Nick? <laughs> In the ways that they're talking about, for sure. But, <laughs> but, Here's the thing. Like, Chris, I, I asked rhetorically. I've been in a van with you for a long time. <laughs> and you're a fucker. You are king. Fucker, dude. Not in a way that's, like, offensive, you know? 
I'm no, not like fucking Chris. And like the way that I am about Kale. Yeah, it's not like but that. Like, but in a unique Chris Mills type way, you know? Stinky guy, I think I think you could say is James, mm. but not, you don't like smell. It's more so like, you my, did ruin a bunch of Chris's it's, books. My, it's, it's after my the gig set. clothes. My gig <laughs> clothes and like sweating is obviously not great. James, James hygiene is fine, but it's after the set. It's it can be bad. Lot, I, I think it's directly course. correlated to high testosterone. Test, high T for yeah, sure. Must be. <laughs> high T for sure. I, w- I wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> God, who's who's the sleepiest? Is Casey? Casey. I mean, he gets up two minutes before we have to leave every day. Qu- quite literally, mm-hmm. uh-huh. dude. Oh, that's, thing, that's sometimes the worst. Another one of his bad luck things was having his identity stolen a day before Warp Tour started. <laughs> <laughs> so I forgot about that. That was fucking Dude, insane. Like literally Unreal. someone awesome. someone logged into his bank account and sent themselves like a Zelle payment for like all of his money. All of his money. <laughs> from and, his then, own bank account. and then something happened with his phone too. He like got locked out of his phone. He was getting notifications on his phone. It, his SIM card got hacked and his bank account <laughs> number. It was like this whole like multi-layer thing. Unbelievable. And, and the person Christ. who sent themselves money like sent it to their real account with their real name. God, that was smart. I have to think Casey is in some way responsible for the, how poor our connection has been this entire episode. Probably. It's it, Casey. It yeah. figures. Casey's He's probably it's, hacked. It's the Casey hacking. It figures. <laughs> the guy that hacked his SIM card hacked my fucking internet. And that's yeah, <laughs> probably. When we get this. Yeah, let's talk food because uh, you guys are the namesake of the show. You guys are half the show. You know, people don't think about that. But mm-hmm. harm's way, it's fucking right there when it comes to hard lore. So we, food wise, yeah, you know, I've talked to James at length about this. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but but what do you guys as a unit? get fired up about four out of five of us love Taco Bell. James does not love Taco Bell. That so, is true. So we, so we kind of, I think we compromise with Chipotle mm-hmm. a lot. I, I, which I know Colin doesn't back, but it is, you know, pound for pound. It's, it's a pretty good deal, but Chris and I value. are starting Dude, the amount of food you get is like undeniable. Yeah. Protein. Chris too. and I are starting a revolution though. The sweet green revolution. We're starting the sweet green revolution. Oh, dude. Yeah. Love sweet I, green. I really think in this day and age, like what you get for how much you pay and how widely available it is, it, it can be like a new stable. Is I mean, it widely available? I dude, think they're it, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, but like middle of America. Yeah. Where middle like, America. No. Where like you're going to find your Chipotle, obviously not so much, but like I dude, think. Sweet green is not cheap. Yes, it is. It's not. I, mean, I don't think it's, it's cheap. It's less than fifteen. Dude, it's no, no, no. If you sign up for the thing, it's less than thirteen. What's the thing? It's the sweet green pass. Do you have that? What? It's ten bucks a month. It's ten bucks a month, but it gets you three dollars off every twelve hours, so you can use it every twelve hours. So your fucking fourteen dollar whatever salad is eleven dollars. Dude, I, I mean, think my order there is like twenty three, twenty four bucks. Are you what? getting like double protein? What are you getting, dude? Nah, just, chicken, yeah, avocado, I just get, I get the hot the fish taco salad, subtract one thing, add lentils and chickpeas. Dude, and a major cheese. strike, no soda. Is that like, is true. I'm gonna I mean, that's pathetic. Yeah, I do get, not uh, disagree. What's it called? The Olipop bullshit. Olipop and uh and then they have what's the, that uh, seltzer with a little bit of sugar in it? It's uh, oh that bubbly or spindrift. No, spindrift. spindrift. Yeah, I'm not, not, not super into Spindrift is whatever. What do we like as a band? I mean, yeah, what is the we, band like? I mean, like we like we try to like eat at like some cool places when we're in like major cities. Chris is king of like two, you know, checking the phone and being like, "This place got good reviews." Yeah, he's the king of Yelp. King of Yelp. King, <laughs> king, king, king of, of Yelp. Yelp, dude. Yelp. You leave reviews Yelp. on Yelp, Chris? You a reviewer? No. Nah, 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 nah. I'm you got to get into it. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I maybe left one or two Yelp reviews yeah. out of spite, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do we Fair. eat? I what's mean, like I, a what's a place where all of us go? Like, I, oh shit! I think we're we we get excited about good pizza spots. Like, I mean, like and, obviously, like if we're if we're going through like, you know, Wilkes Bar or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we go to we go to Angelo's. Angelo's. Um, we definitely like In and Out. Chris does, can't partake, but but we collectively yeah. like it. And I have a video of Nick eating his first 
In and Out Burger. I'm a big Del Taco yeah. fan. Too. Oh, we yeah. do like Del. We love yeah. Del. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's, that's probably the one. That's like probably fast the one. Food. If we're talking Cali, yeah. you know, yeah. Del Taco is pretty sick. I would say collectively, the mo- like probably the place we've eaten at the most is Chipotle, though. Honestly, a- absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there are there are weeks where we do it five days out of seven. But like the thing is, it's it's for if you're lifting and stuff on tour, it's I mean, you can get 50 grams of protein with the chicken bowl. I think that's like why I like it the most. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And and they're mostly everywhere and mostly consistent. And they have Coke. And they have Coke, which is huge. No argument. So Great is fun. that your Taco Bell mm-hmm. criticism, James? Is it the Pepsi? I mean, I just don't think, I mean, I don't think Taco Bell is that great tasting. And it also completely destroys my stomach. Ah, that, that is I mean, true. Is. That is true. <laughs> we have all suffered. I mean, <laughs> you're to talk. <laughs> That is also true. <laughs> you're, you're the fart guy, in, right, Chris? No, no, no. Dude, Chris, <laughs> the, Chris's your, farts smell like garbage. Oh, 100% Nick, the fart yeah. guy. Nick does, Nick does your gimmick, Colin, where he'll, he'll, he'll let one go and he'll be like, it's fucking ducks. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? What was that? That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Something hey, moving. Yeah. That. <laughs> hey, I mean. That's good. How's Casey? He's just sleepy? Yeah, he's mostly just sleepy. And mostly spills a lot. Yeah, yeah. He's just easy. <laughs> he's really, he's really very truly easy. Um, he's I'm trying fish. to think. Well, what's, yeah, Dude, what's funny left. is he like back in the day, he had a MacBook that didn't have a working audio jack. So if he wanted to listen to it, <laughs> he had to bring an audio interface with him everywhere. <laughs> Connected via USB and then have headphones plugged into that. And then also the battery was dead. So if he wanted to use it, it had to be plugged in. So he would just be like in venues, like carrying around his little <laughs> gremlin tools to go set up and work on beats. And shit. he's just like, I mean, Casey's definitely the easiest person to be on with on tour. I mean, he, he yeah. will eat like. What are those things called? Torpedoes? Uh, uh, no, the tornadoes. 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 From fucking yeah, loves, yeah. dude. The Buffalo tornado. Yeah, dude, those he, are good. I, he, there was a point in time when we started touring where he would eat those in Reese's sticks every single day. Every stop. <laughs> <laughs> he gets, get some fucking sticks. The van was just dude. littered with garbage. Reese's sticks as a, a like consistent snack is inhuman. <laughs> that's his good. So he just crazy. got it. He got it the other day at practice. Yeah, yeah, he ate them every day for like two years. They're fucking good. Oh my god, he's not wrong. Guys, and the uh, king size too. It's October, you know. <laughs> Tis the you season. motherfuckers. You guys believe in ghosts or what, I James? Mean, I feel like we talked about it already. Did we? I mean, I can't remember if I did or not. I mean, I. I love the idea of all supernatural things like aliens, ghosts, you know, all, you know, different dimensions, all the others, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have not had an experience, so it's really hard to say if I believe or not, but I'm not denying the existence. I must say. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Chris. I, uh, I've had an experience. Um, <laughs> In Roselle, <laughs> Illinois, you know. Um, so, Play it you know, on me, brother. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's so it, it's hard to deny. But, yeah, you know, I um, I had an experience, and this is when I was in high school. I want to say, I, I, I want to say junior year. Yeah, I was um, a sophomore. It's not a happy story. No, no, no. It, it, it's it's kind of sad, you know, a part like part of it, right? But anyway, long story short, you know, it was, um, it was around – um, kind of like the Thanksgiving holiday. And I think was, it was the first day of winter break, like school let out. Yeah. So mm. it was, so it was like the Wednesday before Thanksgiving yeah. and it was the first snowfall of, of the year. Right. And, um, you know, right by my house, you know, Bo referenced like the pond, but then next to the pond is like this street called, uh, like Bryn Mawr, which is like one of the main thoroughfares through, through Roselle. But anyway, long story short, like these, these kids got into a, like a significant car accident and like ran into a light pole, um, pretty much in my, in my backyard. So I could see it from like my parents' back porch. Right. Um, and unfortunately like one of the kids ended up like passing away, um, due to the accident. And, um, you know, it was maybe like a day or two later. And, um, you know, I was, I was, I was coming home like late one night and, um, 
and I was just, you know, I was, I was like having some ice cream before bed and I was just like looking outside, um, where the accident had, had, had taken place. And there was like investigators or detectives or, or, you know, somebody was like forensics documenting or yeah, yeah, forensics maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like kind of taking photos and like kind of just like surveying the area. And I was just kind of watching them do it, you know, um, just like kind of curiously looking on and, and they, they snapped a photo and then out of nowhere, right. I start to see this like shadow start running down the street. Um, and I'm, I'm like looking closer and I was like, is there a person there? Is something going on? And there's no person. All I, all I can see is this shadow running down the street that is like, you know, and because there were street lights, right. So it just looks like there's this, this body shadow running down the street until, um, you know, it kind of, I kind of lose it in my vision because, you know, trees are in the way and stuff, but I got to say like, it scared, scared the hell out of me. I remember you telling me about yeah. it. I remember I, he's, he's consistently, I will say as, <laughs> as a skeptic, he has consistently told this story the same way ever since it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you know, and I, you know, it was, it was, it spooked me so much that like I, I ended up going and like waking up my dad, you know? And I was like, dude, I just saw something. And, 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 you know, to this day, like my dad remembers that vividly because he was like, man, I, n- I never saw you that, that spooked before, you know? Um, but it was, you know, since, since then on, you know, it's it, like for me personally, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to deny the possibility, I guess, of, of, uh, kind of something outside ourselves. Mom, man. Nick. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Chris. That was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ever seen anything, Nick? No, and I wish I believed in it, kinda, because it's it's cool, I think, and like fascinating. But I think I don't really, you know. Uh, Thanks, Nick. So. I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I wish I believed Chris, but honestly, guess like me, please. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. I, I'm saying like I I don't doubt like the validity of like people's experiences or they th- experienced. You know, you believe like they that experienced their reality and what happened or what I, I don't know. You I, believe I know. that people believe what they saw. You know what I mean? Like you're not saying to someone, no, you didn't experience that. You're saying what you think you experienced maybe was something else. Totally that. And I think potentially even if they did experience what, what they're like, what they're interpreting, what they're explaining. Like, I think that maybe there's like an explanation for it mm-hmm. usually, you mm-hmm. know? but um, Colin, I'll give you, I'll give you the explanation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The one, the one uh, experience Colin had was actually in K80's house in Nashville. Just by oh yeah, I've heard this story actually from you. Yeah, isn't that crazy? We all we we grew up with that girl. Crazy. Why don't you ask her about it? I did. I never. I I I met her for the first time that night. I messaged her about it. Did you see her? My balls damn near exploded out of my head. That's crazy. Is this uh is this story documented somewhere? Yeah, many times on here, I feel like. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have to I could I mean it's it. October, I could tell it one more time. You might as well. Give me the chills. Let's hear it. Hit the classic. <sighs> Let's do this. <laughs> Just turn off the lights. <laughs> so what <laughs> happened was uh so Alpha Omega was my very first US tour ever, right? Uh, we were staying at Katie's house, Katie, her house yep. in Nashville is very old place. There was like a party going on while we were staying there. So it was kind of just like, yeah, you can stay here, but like there's a billion people here. Yeah. So Walter Delgado and I, our goal was go in there, find the quietest place, go to sleep. Now he's fast. <laughs> he's so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so he got the best spot before I did, which was in a kind of like nice insulated attic. It was like a nice attic where with like a bookcase and a bed in the back of the room. Uh, he literally full speed runs in this house and runs up the attic. So I'm like, okay, well I'm fucked now. And I was, I asked Katie like, okay, is there anywhere else I can sleep? She's like, you should try the attic. Like maybe you can fit too. So I go to walk up there, the staircase Let's say I'm in the staircase. The room is like around a little banister back there with the, with the bed at the end of the room. 
I walk up the staircase. When you walk up the staircase, all you see is a wall because you have to turn to get to the room. When I turn, I move aside for a girl who is trying to get by me. I say, excuse me. And then like one second later, my heart just sinks because I realized there was not actually a person there. So it was a Holy. small woman with long black hair and a white dress. Classic haunting. Of course. Yeah. Fit, you know, in the OG haunting kit. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so I go downstairs. <laughs> talk this is to the Katie, craziest part. And I'm like, Katie, is your house haunted? And she just looks at me like full emotion in her eyes and asks, did you see her? Holy shit. Woo! Her, dude. <laughs> and, but I guess she's like, she was super benevolent, super cool, totally down with them, loved the parties. Maybe she was just trying to get some sleep in the attic. Mm. It's crazy. Go surreal. I have, I have a question for, for you, though, as a someone who's toured quite a bit, because... I'm surprised that Harm's Way has never seen anything strange like, you know, in the sky, if you will, as we're driving at in, at night. But uh, have you guys ever seen anything strange? I wish, man. And, you know, who knows if you would remember. Right. Well, sure. Dude, What I will say one time on the Black Dahlia tour, we were driving. The tour kind of went from Montreal to fucking Vancouver. And when we were out in the middle of nowhere at one point, I think I was driving or you were driving. And we like looked and the fucking I, at first we thought it was like a like a concrete plant or something like something with huge <laughs> lights, like just a major, Got you know, it. just like a major like manufacturing kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then the lights we were seeing were moving and we got freaked out. And we pulled over and it was just the Aurora Borealis. But it was still <laughs> just like you could see that shit moving. And that's when you wow. actually see it, it. It looked really cool. It's really yeah, cool. And it's also really, really easy to think like, I wonder why ancient whatever's thought that there were gods dancing. And it's like, well, that's why. Cause that shit's fucking crazy. It's like moving. I would have thought that eyes. for sure. I would have been yeah. like, I worship whatever that is. I'm, I'm yeah, kneeling. Exactly. I'm on my and, knees. Uh, <laughs> I will. I remember when we were in Reno on the Acacia strain on the knocked loose tour. Yeah. And we were hanging out with the, the locals. And when we talked about skinwalkers, when that came up, they, they didn't, they don't talk about it. Yeah. They weren't into it. They were like, yeah, we're not going to. Yeah. Like they don't, they're not down. I don't even think it's just in case. I think it's like, because don't, don't bring that here. Yeah. 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 I, I, I heard (laughs) of some bands trying to go to that one, the ranch. Yeah. The ranch that supposedly is like where people witness a lot of strange things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know which, what band this was, but I, I can't remember who told me. Um, but basically they had gone and they went into the, it's like a huge body of water where people get to see, you know, or try to see stuff, I, I should say. And then I guess as they were leaving, they said they saw a man walking on the side of the road and it transformed into a, a goat and started running after the van. That's what they claim. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Isn't, obviously. Would, would you do that if you could transform into a Oh, goat? my God. You'd fuck I would with every f- band on the I'd road, fuck man. with everybody. <laughs> but, like. <laughs> couldn't be me. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I mean, obviously, that sounds a little far-fetched. Yeah. But, like I said. We've never seen we've never seen anything, any flying saucer or nothing like that. No, nah, I bet. I mean, the alien stuff, I definitely believe in aliens. Maybe yeah. not the way that they're portrayed. But, you but know, yeah, but, they, they got to be But they exist some somewhere, yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. They're among but, us, uh, for 100%. Yeah. One of them's uh, right. at home at home in Milwaukee working on songs right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me Casey ask one lives. final question to everybody. And you can think yes, about sir. it for a second. Okay. I want to know each of your top four hardcore records of all time. Hardcore and adjacent. Nah. Just hardcore? Keep it as I want core, core as you can. Dude. Keep it core. Yeah. You guys think about it. I've, I'm sure I've answered this before, so I'll go first just because right. I got let's, it at the ready. Let's hear it. I'm going to go uh, Age of Coral, Master Killer, Satisfaction, and then for like a more modern one, Lowest of the Low. That's a great answer. I, I just think it's like, for what I'm into, it just has to be it. 
Absolutely. Covers all bases. Yeah. James? <laughs> I mean, what's funny, I think two of yours are mine. Mm-hmm. I would obviously Master Killer, Age of Coral. I'd probably go with um, Can't Close My Eyes as being Great one of my, my favorite, you know, seven inches of all time. Uh, honestly, the band I listen to the most probably like it's, I guess, post late nineties, two thousands is all at war. So I would probably say for those who are crucified would be probably it, it's probably my top four, if not top five honorable mention <laughs> <laughs> for those who fear tomorrow integrity, yeah. I think is one of the best records ever written Dude, as well. We just did an episode over the weekend. Did you, do you realize that can't close my eyes was 1985? I did. I did know that yeah. a year before Age of Coral. That's crazy. crazy. Like, ju- like, it's just crazy. when I think about it, it's crazy to me. The context just, is I crazy. Just, yeah, yeah, the context. Yeah, Chris. Mm. Nick, <laughs> Nick, go ahead. Nick, I feel like this is going to be a whole different wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I Nick, say, Nick's, Nick's into different kinds of core. I feel like the closest adjacent to what you guys are going to say is probably like Birth Is Pain. But okay, um, you fail me. Good answer. Uh. Th- Damn, it's like all gonna be like metalcore. I Doesn't matter. Like, uh, it's okay. Just hit him. You got the brain. Hit him with it. I gotta think about it more. Yeah, Chris, that counts. Yeah, I'll probably. You know, it, it's it's funny because I think um, we're gonna we're all the same on this one, but Age of Coral and Master Killer for sure. And then I'm gonna deviate a little bit. Mm. You know, and I'm going to pick a Converge record as well. I'm going to pick Jane Doe. Um, and then I'll, I'm probably going to go with, man, it, it's either between, you know, I'm a, like a big Youth Crew fan too. So, it, and I, I, I mean, I immediately go to Youth of Today and it's going to either be between Break Down the Walls and Can't Close My Eyes. Yeah. For me as well. Two more, mm. buddy boy. Close me off, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for a core record, I'm also gonna say master killer i'm gonna say uh the dude like the tragedy Mm self-titled really and uh hmm. i don't know if this counts but uh animosity empires oh oh it counts here brother (laughs) (laughs) those are those are great answers this was a great conversation listen man whatever you do you hang, you turn this episode off, you buy this fucking thing, you listen to it, you go see them. They're on tour right now. Where are right you today? Now. Uh, where are we on Thursday of next week? St. Louis, I think. St. Louis. St. Louis. St. Louis. Thank God. You get some barbecue. Oh. Slather up real quick <laughs> and then play an incredible set. Harm's way. Common suffering. Out now. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Any uh, last words to leave the people with? Um, yeah, actually, I've been thinking about this for a minute. Um, give me just one second. I have it. I have it written up here. Um, I'm going to leave them with um, St. Louis on t- uh, October the 19th at Blueberry Hill, uh, Louisville <laughs> on October 20th at Portal, uh, Columbus. <laughs> Go see us on tour because uh, that was good. it's our first it's our first one back, and Lord knows it would be nice to uh, see everybody. Yeah. So true. <laughs> this is a this is a special one, I think, for all of us, man. You know, it's been kind of four years in the making, and mm-hmm. you know, it, it's a. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's crazy to think that we have the opportunity to do this again. You know, um, after all the ups and downs of like the past few years, so, um, come check it out. You know, and obviously. Thanks to you and Bo for inviting us on to do this thing and um, give the record a proper in-depth analysis. <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, fun anecdote. When Colin went to Amoeba to buy one, sold out. I love that. James, anything you want to leave him with? Honestly, I just you know want to say thanks to everyone who supported us You know through the the time we've been a band thanks to will yip thanks to vitalo and obviously thanks to these guys and casey all the mm-hmm. way up in milwaukee 
Um, it's been a long four years for me, been through a lot of shit. And, uh, this is, this record was really important to me. So it's, I'm glad that we're finally, you know, going to be able to tour on it and hopefully, you know, this will just be the start of touring again for a long time. Mm. Nick? I, I hope so. Kind of, kind of just echoing that, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nick, can you do the, uh, the face real quick? Oh, dude, small, there's more than one small mouth, dude. Small yeah, mouth. Do right. small mouth. We need hold on. Hold do on. I need to get like closer? No, yeah, get no, up, get right up now. Nick, you, get you, right you, up here and show me small mouth. And that's how there. this episode's gonna end. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's got a myriad of faces small mouth, big tongue, tape face. Hold on, he, hold on. He's hold, hold on. Oh, yeah, the tape face, but do small mouth. It's small the, mouth. It's the best yeah, thing. I gotta see small mouth. There you go. Here, all right, here he comes. Ready. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, bring it in. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Th- there's Done. no better it's way. It's so to small. How does he do it? I don't know. <laughs> the oh. smallest mouth. Dude, I world. was I was showing I was showing um like the inclination guys that photo the other day and they're like, that's photoshopped. That's edited. And I was like, no, that's real. <laughs> no, he gets that mouth. small. It gets no one ever small. thinks it's real. Yeah. Smallest mouth in the game. <laughs> next time, bro. next time we'll get big tongue and things are gonna go I gotta, up. I gotta have big tongue next time. But now we've seen him do it live, so it's obviously real. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. Harm's way, common suffering out now. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.